Great, thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, January 23rd, 2014 special meeting of the Hopkinton School Committee. I'll call the meeting to order an open session and invite you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Great. Thank you. So uh, what was formerly known as the working session for budget um, is now special meeting. Same, same kind of meeting, different name. So tonight we have center school budget, Elmwood school budget, Hopkins school budget presentations. Then we have a discussion on uh, the recommendations that the superintendent has shared with us regarding um, full day kindergarten and uh, what that might look like as a revision because the budget that we have before us has kindergarten half day option and full day tuition option for all who want it. That's currently the way the budget draft is. So uh, we have some data to talk about um, regarding her recommendation for a full day kindergarten program for all. And that's just a discussion. No decisions have been made. We're just discussing. And following that, we also have capital warrant articles to discuss. So we are looking to wrap our discussion up by 9.45, if possible. So we should begin. And are we going in the order that we have? Yes. OK, so we're going to start with center school. Could I just make a Are you going to explain comment? the whole, please? Yeah. Yes, OK. So. Um, I asked Mrs. Dubow, Mr. Youngberg, and Mr. Martineau to be prepared to give an overview statement um, kind of in order before questions. So they will each make an overview statement based on um, the documents that you've all been provided with, basically summarizing, brief statement, um, and then we'll take questions to anybody. Um, so you can direct your questions to any of us that are sitting here, okay? So we will start with, and, and we'll come back to talk about the specific, um, as Ms. Burdick has just indicated, specifics around the center school budget at a later time um, after they, they've done their, their reports. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Next year, center school, our kindergarten first grade building, uh, NESDAC has us projected student enrollment at 417. So at this time, we are planning for 10 kindergarten sections. When we talk about our transition, 10 full day kindergarten sections and 11 first grade sections. That would, at this time, allow us to have class size of 19 students in kindergarten and 20 in first grade. You'll see changes in our budget that would reflect the change, the transition to full day kindergarten. So you'll see changes with an increase in specialists, small percentage FTEs with, for example, music increasing one FTE. That way we could provide music to kindergarten students all year long whereas now it's, um, it's not the case for half-day students, improve in uh, providing physical education to kindergarten students. So when you see the change with the transition, currently half-day students do not have those specials all year long, and also we would have a different number of um, classes to support. Another change that you'll see is an increase in our office support. We currently have support uh, with a 12-month secretary and then a 10-month secretary who works eight hours a week eight hours a week is a wonderful addition however we welcome more many of you that have been to center school know how busy that office and um, it's a hopping place at times and we are seeking to increase that I have it so that we would have eight 16 hours a week support which would help significantly in terms of attendance and notes and ensuring everyone gets where they need to go with that another change that you'll see is initially we were seeking an assistant principal at center school currently we have what's called an assistant to the principal a managerial position that had been taken out of the budget but looking along uh, moving forward to full day k what can we do i am seeking to maintain that position because previously that was taken out it looks as though it's an addition and it is a maintenance of that position instead of seeking an assistant principal with that so i know that sounds a little confusing i can speak to that a little bit more when you look at our expense summary you can see we were able to reduce some of our costs for our um, general supplies and English language arts textbooks you know looking at what do we have what are we able to uh, use from other grants or sources to supply our needs 
the general increases would be to support three additional kindergarten classrooms. We would need to outfit them with curriculum, materials, furniture, which we're looking to use the kindergarten grant. We don't have that amount yet, so it's, it's difficult to plan for a grant that we don't yet have the allocation. We wrote a competitive grant and received some funds for the planning process. Over the summer, we will receive the quality full day grant, and with that amount, we're looking to then be able to purchase our furniture with that grant. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Youngberg. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for uh, the Elmwood uh, budget summary, um, next year's enrollment, we're looking at a net uh, reduction of 26 total students. Uh, the way that that breaks down, <coughs> we're looking at the uh, incoming second grade as uh, an additional 18 students from what we currently have, uh, which would mean an addition of one second grade section. Um, however, the incoming third grade class is going to be uh, reduced with the anticipated NESDEC uh, enrollment by 52 students, um, which would reduce two sections. So <clears throat> by reducing two sections from grade three, adding one to grade two, we have a net reduction of one section. Um, what we're looking at doing is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about special ed for a minute because uh, we're looking at restructuring our special ed model um, delivery for next year. What this would do is it would eliminate uh, our integrated uh, classrooms, what we describe as integrated classrooms. Uh, integrated classes uh, typically um, are enrolled with students with more uh, moderate needs and uh, what we would do is essentially um, eliminate those integrated classes, uh, spread our students out a little more evenly, and uh, reduce class sizes. Um, and in addition, we would add in a co-teaching model. Um, so this budget would support a co-teaching model next year. Co-teaching would include a special educator and a general educator uh, within, within a classroom. Um, so with this current model, we could potentially have uh, two co-taught classrooms in second grade and two co-taught classrooms in third grade. Um, so that would mean that average class sizes for next year would be reduced from 23 to 24 students, which we currently have in grade three, to 21 students per class. <clears throat> and it would maintain our class sizes at 21 for grade two. Um, in terms of our expenses, uh, we have been level funded for several years. Um, we, I did have a few expenses in there for uh, basic um, maintenance and upkeep for teacher chairs, for example, um, conference room furniture, uh, those types of things that have been um, put off the table for a few years um, have been in or in this year's budget. Um, you may see that in our non-payroll budget, there was a decrease of about $7,900 uh, due to math textbook supplies, which are going to be um, uh, actually uh, purchased through a central office uh, budget. And uh, that's a summary of our, of our major changes. Uh, the other uh, personnel change uh, is our uh, secretarial support. From currently, we have one 12-month secretary we have a 10-month secretary uh, who's in 19 and 3 quarter hours per week. And the increase would go from uh, 0.4 for that part-time to 0.6, uh, which would increase the amount of time, um, especially during the very, very busy times uh, for dismissal, making sure that students are going in the right places on the right buses, um, and making sure that our building is secure. Um, that would be uh, uh, a very important time of the day to add on those hours. I remind the committee that some of these um, have been budgeted for from through the central office re re reorganization that I explained last week mm -hmm. that happened after these requests were made. So these are not additional budget items, but some of them have already been um, taken care of through the, the reorg where, where we, we made some adjustments. Thank you. Mr. Martineau. So I just want to start by talking about um, <laughs> current enrollment at Hopkins School. We currently have 567 fourth and fifth graders. 
Um, and the current fourth grade cohort is around 261 students, and there are currently 11 sections of fourth grade. And as, you, as many of you know, we have a large cohort of fifth grade students. We have 306 fifth grade students currently with 14 sections. So the story has been over the past couple years, we really have had to hire new staff, shift staff from fourth grade to fifth grade, and also uh, re repurpose space to accommodate for those additional classrooms. Um, I'm happy to share that, although it's a great group of kids, <laughs> <laughs> They're going out to the middle school, <laughs> and our um, class sizes are um, moderating for uh, both fourth and fifth grade. Um, so next year we're anticipating um, uh, 270 fourth graders with 12 sections of fourth grade and 261 fifth grade uh, classrooms, uh, with, again with 12 sections of fifth grade. And the nice thing is that we have 24 classrooms at Hopkins School, so it fits very nicely with the facility that we have. And we're also able to capture um, some space that we were using for classroom um, classrooms, but now we can uh, repurpose them for project rooms. Um, so overall, we'll have 24 classrooms, which is a reduction of one, uh, one classroom teacher from this year's number. Um, in terms of personnel, um, we hope to add, the budget includes an additional 0.5 learning specialist. Um, we currently have a uh, learning specialist who is 0.5, and we're increasing that person to uh, 1.0, which will um, inherently provide increased attention to students, allow us to move to a more of a co-teaching, co-planning model, um, as well as increase the number of trained professionals working with students. In this model, um, it also shifts away from using paraprofessionals to deliver service to students and really looks at highly qualified, trained experts to work with students who receive special education services. Not that paraprofessionals don't do a great job, they do, but there's just nothing like a trained, highly qualified teacher. Um, in terms of um, secretarial support, similar to Elmwood and the Center School, um, currently we have 1.4 secretaries. Um, so what this means during a typical day is that from um, 8 to noon, the office is um, supported by two um, secretaries, and then from noon to 4, there's only one person who's running the office. I mean, as you know, um, dismissal procedures, um, arrival procedures, just the day-to-day -day operations, um, it's very difficult for one person to manage from that 12 to 4. So the budget includes a 0.4 increase in the 10th month, 10 month secretary. Um, and I think that will benefit um, students. Um, they often come to the office with notes and ask questions, uh, teachers, um, as well as parents. I think that the secretaries are the, f the face of Hopkins School, and they're often the first people that people meet. And I think it's important that they get high quality service, and I think that will the increase will benefit that. And lastly, the safety um, it is, is an issue, um, and I've communicated that for the past several years. I think having one person um, operate uh, dismissal of 567 kids um, is challenging. And I think um, having two people during an afternoon, afternoon dismissal will improve the safety. In terms of materials and resources, over the last uh, year or two, Hopkins has made a concerted effort to really inventory its um, supplies. And we've actually, over the past two years, have been really able to uh, decrease our supply account by using what we have in inventory. And this year, there's actually an increase in supply account because we no longer have an inventory that we can rely on. I believe it's an actual true number of what we use in terms of, of supplies and materials. Um, so that's a, some of the highlights for Hopkins School. And thank you. So um, thank you all, and thank you for um, the people sitting behind us who are here showing their support to, to the elementary program. Um, I would open it up to questions now. So I'm going to just make a, an, a, an ask first. Uh, usually you come and you all talk about how, despite the fact that you're across three buildings, you're <coughs> super unified and, and super good. So we didn't have the opportunity to hear, to hear that, but I thought maybe I'd give you the plug to explain again that you know, how, how much you love working together and how communicative <laughs> you are and all that. It's, um, 
I think that that's the greatest sentence I've heard is despite the fact that you're across three buildings, this is a um, kindergarten to fifth grade curriculum and program and um, is there anything else you want to add? I, mean, I think that um, for me when I was thinking about Hoffman's budget and I think as an elementary budget, a lot of the work that needs to be done doesn't occur additional expenses such as aligning an elementary program, making sure that we have strong instruction in all of our classrooms, making sure there's alignment across classrooms but also between schools. And when I think about that work, um, I think we have the support materials to do that. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily get represented in the budget as an additional cost. So. Nice job. And, and I will just add that even uh, an example was just this morning where all of these people sitting here, um, a as well as our secondary curriculum director, um, met with Mary Jane Hackett, and we spent well over two hours looking at exactly that. How can we work together to provide the very best special education program? And it was a collaborative sharing of ideas. Um, and, and it was just a, a really a great opportunity to be able to work with this group who are looking definitely beyond their own building to, you know, the conversation was about preparing kids beginning from the left <laughs> all the way to the right and then on to the middle school. don't know, if Dave, if you wanted to say. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's it, just to echo uh, Mr. Martindale, um, we really have done a lot of behind the scenes work. Uh, not just uh, for, for budgeting purposes, but for programmatic purposes, um, really trying to align um, our school improvement plans and really um, taking that approach of not just looking at each of our buildings individually for our needs, but looking at where we are in each of our buildings. Um, and uh, those conversations have not only been <coughs> helpful in terms of allocating our resources appropriately, uh, but it's also set the tone for the way things work within our buildings. Um, you know, it's, it's collaborative throughout our buildings. We get to go visit e each other's buildings. We take turns having our meetings in different places so that we have opportunities to walk through. Um, so it's, it's really been enriching, and I think we all challenge each other to think yeah. outside the box, um, which I, I know that we all, uh, we all need that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to add to that, I can say even though we're three physically separate buildings, we do work in the mind of thinking not only of ourselves but the impact for the other buildings. And something that I'm very appreciative, and I know you are, is when we look at, for example, that meeting today that we talked about how we're um, delivering services, what are our staffing, we're looking at the picture of where the needs are and how to best um, support those needs. And it might not be my school in particular that has the need at the moment, but it might be Elmwood or Hopkins. And just having that relationship that we are an elementary team, uh, professional development alignment, we've done a lot this <coughs> year and we still have a lot more to do. So it's a great working um, team that we have here. Okay. I just, over the course of, of my time here, it we've had different um, structures for how each of the uh, pieces of the budget are presented and over the course of the last f maybe five years it's been a building to where you come as a team and you talk as a team and, and I think if you are new to the district or if you've not had anybody yet in um, Hopkins and it's your first year it's um, it's remarkable to hear the planning, the conversation, uh, and the transition that you prepare for when you're sending people off to the next building. And so it comes down to dollars, but it's how you use your dollars. And so uh, I just wanted to give you that, that opportunity just to talk about why it is that we put the three of you together. We always schedule the elementary school together. We schedule the high school and the middle school as well. And so tonight is, is elementary school. So um, I, I'm not going to have any questions. I'm going to start down here with Ms. Birchman. We'll go through and then we'll have the, our appropriations, uh, appropriation committee um, colleagues as well get to ask. So why don't you address the question to Dr. McLeod and you'll figure out. I will. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have a lot of questions, but um, I guess one that I just wanted to, I don't know if it's a question or just a confirmation, but um, in light of the conversation that we just had before this meeting with a bunch of interested parents in the community about um, what the options are going to be for full day K for next year, 
the additional staff that will be needed for for uh, for full day K, it, were we to have full day K for everybody, I you know, if you get everything you want, there'll be a modular right there at Center School, and all of this will be contained on the Center School campus. If that doesn't is that not successful at town meeting, and you need to house students in Elmwood, I guess that's really my question. Is some of that staff going to have to shift then to Elmwood? Are we clear on what the impact will be as far as an increased need? Y you know, it's it's primarily the related arts areas, I think. Right. Um, so we are clear, and yeah. we plan for it one way or the other. I mean, in a nutshell, the related arts would travel okay. to support the, this, the program. And the actual details of it, I've actually said to, to Lauren and Dave, we're, we're not going to spend time on the details right now until we know what we're looking at. Right. But what we do know is that there is room at Elmwood School for three classrooms. Right. I mean, I think right. what I'm interested in now is to just make sure that, you know, right now what we're going to do next is vote on money. So whatever money that we vote on is going to cover that need regardless of yes. the location We've of the need. Of that. That's yes. what I wanted to yep. be clear on. So, okay. Thank you. But we're not doing that next. No, no. Right. no I meant just so not just so people not next right this minute, right. but the next step in the process. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Are you done? So with respect to center school and the budget, um, all of the everything, all of the additions are going to be ongoing except for the outfitting of the classroom. So ongoing, I mean, that's an expense that we're going to incur in 2015, yes. 2016. for staffing, unless enrollment were, was to dip. <clears throat> and if we don't, um, we don't get tuition free full day kindergarten and we end up offering half day, does, do those numbers change, or will you still be outfitting classrooms because we anticipate so many more we, full days? We wouldn't. We wouldn't anticipate more than one section of half day. That we would not anticipate more than that. So, so no, it wouldn't change. So the budget it will stay the same, or your your ask would stay the same. Right, and we have um, kindergarten registration next week, so we will have uh, up to date information information to share with you should that projected enrollment number change. Will you know by next Thursday? Well, Thursday night is the last, so I would be able to send you a Text. message. Yes, I could, because <laughs> an enrollment is open house. It's 4 to 8, Tuesday and Thursday, so we will be surveying families for their preference. Um, you know, not a lottery, but that information will help us determine mm. where they're seeking to go. Definitely. And the, the center school, the additional secretarial position are there I mean I know for Elmwood we got the hours and the need for the coverage is this for a specific t a lot time that we need coverage or we want coverage I think I would prefer right now we have someone come in and it's two hours four days a week I would prefer late morning to the afternoon I can speak to the dismissal um, that is where children arrive to us you get them to us they're here we want to make sure we can get them home where they need to go this week was very challenging it wasn't Monday we started on Tuesday it wasn't Wednesday it was Thursday children have different plans and we want to make sure we're able to effectively relay update the notes make sure children are going so I long story short I would prefer midday to the end of the day so this would be the same question for both of you with respect to those additional hours or that additional allotment is it the, the same but are we just increasing the hours of the person that we have coming in or yeah. is this a new hire well, it, it would be posted. You would um, interview for it, but um, the person that works currently has a handle on the system that we used, that we currently <coughs> use. I guess my maybe it's just being naive. My confusion comes in when you you add a new position for 0.2 hours. You 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 might have to add. I guess 0.2 hours you wouldn't have to add benefits. But if you're increasing someone from one four to 0.6, yes. Right. So so is this going to affect benefits in other parts of? Expenses. The town's Could. budget. That's right. You told me that last week. Yeah. Benefits come out of the town. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Um, I think that that was it. That's those are the only questions I had. You know what? What, what might be helpful for, for me is just to clarify the the change in kindergarten staffing. So currently we have 6.5 teachers to move to full day kindergarten. We would be adding to have a complement of 10 teachers. We would be increasing our support staff 0.5. We currently have 6.5 um, paraprofessionals. We are seeking at restructuring our day and our curriculum, and we would have a model where we have some teachers with a shared assistant, so it would not be a one-to-one -one for that. 
so we would have seven assistants for the 10 classrooms. We're looking to increase music, point one, and <coughs> wellness, increasing at point three to provide those related um, art specials to those kindergarten students. Well, I think, thank you, first of all, but I think I'm gonna end up maybe being the bad guy tonight. Um, as we, especially as we kind of dig through um, our overall budget discussion next. Um, you know, as an overall, as far as the presentation that you've all put together, I think it's very good, and, and I understand it. Um, and I know that, that there's been a lot of collaborative work going on <coughs> to get to kind of where each of these numbers are. Um, you know, the only conceptual issue I have maybe is the increase in administrative type spend. Um, you know, we increased last year and, and we had a reason for that and, and, and there was a little bit of increase the year before. Um, and I'm just, you know, it's small but, but it just, on top of everything else, is just kind of an area that I'm a little bit concerned with. But, right. but So, can I mm -hmm. speak to that first? So, um, in, in reality, we're not increasing the administrative spend. We're reallocating an a position at the yep. central office. We're actually reducing administrative spend and instead reallocating right. to provide the additional support at the elementary okay. at yep. the elementary level and, and actually um, across the district um, to provide the additional support that, that in, in essence, in the end, Scott, does affect kids at the classroom level. So we talk about our, our um, implementation of RTI and we talk about uh, teachers, the ed evaluation system. I was, I spent a good <laughs> chunk of today uh, in the buildings and, and I was in and out of classrooms in, in the Elmwood School and it was an incredible opportunity to see instruction happening and to be in there with the principal and with Meredith Eckwall and then to come back and have a conversation about what we saw. That's the kind of conversation that's going to have a, a direct impact on instruction. Mm -hmm. And as a former principal, I was amazed. I thought I never got to do that. I would go in once every cycle, maybe every two years, maybe three, see a dog and pony show, write them up, and that was the end of the evaluation system. This is real, takes a lot of time, and the additional administrator, uh, or the allowing for the increase at the building level and to take it away from the central office level, um, I think is, is it needs to be understood is to have a positive impact on instruction. And, and I do, um, um, I do appreciate the work you've done to try to move things around, mm -hmm. uh, especially from the central office. That right. Was, I, I it was important that. to me that the community didn't feel that I was adding on administrative expense. My, again, my, my concerns are mm -hmm. not particularly with these particular three particular budgets is yeah. it's kind of with some of the overall numbers mm -hmm. that we have going. Yeah, okay. So, so we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. So I I do I want to ask just quickly just based on what Scott was saying bringing me back again. Last week when we were together, we talked about uh, some budget. I'm, I can't even remember. <coughs> and I remember you said Central an office. assistant principal at Center School. I did. And I said I'm going to come back and ask okay. you about that. Okay. So you've just explained okay. yes. different so, so tying to that, you've not asked for an addition at Center School to Mrs. Sheel, and I just have to say it because she's sitting right there, because <laughs> that's what I wondered. I thought, okay, so they're going to have her, and then hopefully she'll stay, and somebody else. And so tonight, what you're saying is that that is not the case. Correct. It is a maintaining of what we currently have, but because initially the plan was to have an assistant, the management position assistant to the principal was taken out now I'm saying nope I'm not going to seek the assistant principal trying to help with um, the budget as you were mentioning it will be maintaining it because it was out and now it's back in it looks like an addition yes but it's honestly yes because that's what because yes. that was last year's yes. budget discussion was let's add yes. and so we're we're back to yes. we're not adding and it's no. just that okay thank you just wanted to clear that one up for myself um. So I, I, ju I just have one question, but I, I will say that in terms of the, the increase in office staff in the schools, uh, as somebody who has actually been in the elementary schools this week, I, I, I think that that's, we talk a lot about value spent 
that, that value spent. It, it, going in not at drop or pickup time, it it's, looks crazy for one person to maintain that office. And we talk about, you know, we're going to talk about some items even in capital that are about safety and security. And we've had recommendations around safety and security where we need to upgrade our, our schools. And anybody who goes in and out of those buildings knows you need somebody at the front of the building to let people in and out, or you have parents who open the door because somebody's standing there. And, and, and that's, you know, and, and so I, I think that that's, I think that's value spent. Um, the one question I have actually is for, for Mr. Youngberg um, is with respect to the, the change in the, um, the integrated classrooms that you talked about, um, my only question is more from a budgetary and class size perspective. So you're, you're net dropping a class section this year, right? That's correct. So what's the sustainability of that model if you get a bigger section next year, that that's the only thing I'm wondering because it looks like you're it, so actually it's a question for yeah, you. He's not anticipating that. Okay. Right, because we have 11 sections of first grade. Right. Can I respond to that? So, regardless of the enrollment for a grade level, in the past, what we've we've done is we've taken two classrooms, let's say at the fourth grade level, and we've capped class size at 18 for those particular integrated classes, and then we distributed the remaining students between the other classrooms. So basically, when you looked at it, uh, we had two classrooms with the class size of 18 students, okay. and the remaining absorbed the, the class size. So it would only, it would have impacted those remaining, let's say, 10 classrooms. Um, so that would, would This have actually gives added. you more sustainability this to actually, deal with spikes, this basically. This actually distributes yeah. equ okay. equality across the classrooms. Good. Okay, that was just me not understanding it. Thank you for okay. clarifying, I appreciate it, and I'm good. Okay, before I, I go over here, I, I just want to um, let you know I was, uh, thank you for representing the school committee at the State of the Schools the other night and the presentation that you put together with Dr. McLeod for um, describing the budget process, the initiatives, strategic plan development and such. And I was able to watch the, the presentation and just because the three of you are here with Dr. McLeod, I just was hoping that you could... Um, give a little advertisement. One of the things I heard was, wouldn't it be great if we could start the schools at different times than they already are starting? And one of the conversation points was, well, we can't do that till next year because we need to have a conversation with the HTA. And so I wanted to give you the opportunity to explain that you haven't had a conversation yet with HTA. the HTA yes, I have. about that that has led to this happening next year. Correct. This is a long conversation that hasn't come to conclusion yet, so if you wanted to add a little bit more, there's sure. so much cohesion here and so much communication, and that would be such a large change. We're not at that point yet. <clears throat> so um, we don't really believe it would be a large change, actually. We think that uh, including Mr. Dumas in, in terms of the transportation issue and having the Elmwood School and the Hopkins School on the same time frame makes a whole lot of sense um, from an educational perspective and for the students going from a later start time to an earlier start time to an even earlier start time at the middle school instead of going late, early, late, right? So that the, and, and the conversation did take place in response to a question that happened at the state of the school. So there was a question from a, from a viewer um, asking whether or not this was something that A, I had considered, and B, we could put in place for next year. And the answer was really, yes, it's been considered, and yes, it's doable, um, but the fact is that the start and end times of our schools are within the teacher's contract. So this is something that will be, need to be part of our discussion that we have next year when we move into negotiations. Um, they were not interested in opening the contract this year to look at that question. So, it's, so it won't be implemented yet next it will year. Not be it wouldn't be implemented until after successful conversations. Right. And, and while it seems logically yeah. not a big deal, right. as, as you've already seen, there's a lot of things that are a really big deal here right. in town. Right. So this is going to be changing people's behavior. And I don't want people to think that when you say next year, they're ready for September, that that's going to change because that's not the case. That's right. This would be, people would be informed well, well, well in advance. It's not at all um, part of this budget discussion. It it's not, not at all part of planning for next year, first day of school busing or anything like no, that. It's no. in the future. <coughs> that's right. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure. 
that I mentioned that. So we have Mr. Sivo and Mr. Manning from Appropriations. So, Mr. Sivo, why don't you start? Sure. I just have uh, a general question on the co-teaching model. And I guess um, I can't put my hands on the math, but it seemed like we were reducing a fair number of paraprofessionals, adding selective uh, learning specialists to support the model. And, and I guess I'm wondering what level of risk is there, budgetary risk, in going to that model and then maybe regressing and, and finding that we actually need different models of support? It's, I'm gonna, it's new. I'm going to start the answer, uh, Frank, if that's okay, and then I'll, 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 I'll open it up. It's the very conversation that we had today, um, and so it's fresh in all of our minds. But I want to start by stressing the fact that the, um, we want to provide the least restrictive environment clearly. And we had students in the, in, in the intensive, part, intensive sections in terms of programming receiving services, and we had two teachers staffed across all buildings for that program. And as our special education needs have been changing, and we've been identifying that kids could be successful with support, students who have been previously placed in an intensive model, in a co-taught classroom. Because if they push in to a classroom that has a gen ed teacher, a special ed teacher, and they're accompanied by a paraprofessional, because that would continue, they're going to have a better educational experience. So that was the first conversation where we said, hey, we can move around some staffing here and provide a better opportunity for kids, a least, less restrictive environment. So that was the beginning. That's where it started. Then um, the team started talking about, well, if we had, stu if we had children in a co-taught classroom, right, and at the elementary level, we all know that that means they're with the same teacher for the whole day, unlike middle school where they travel, then there wouldn't be as great of a need for paraprofessionals because paraprofessionals have been providing additional support, additional classroom support when there hasn't been a special education teacher in the room. So there's been pullout and when the pullout is happening and the gen ed teacher needs extra support with those 20 children while they're in the classroom, we've been, we've been having paraprofessionals provide that. So in, in, in offering a, um, a co-taught classroom environment, that, those numbers just wouldn't be as necessary. And yet we've maintained in each of the buildings enough paraprofessional support through both general education and special education that we can provide the, we can be prepared for the unexpected and we can also provide additional support in classrooms. For example, the one thing I know happens is what if a child who was not initially placed in a, a, special, a co taught classroom is in another classroom and during the course of the year becomes identified as needing special education. So we've planned for that. Um, we're also looking at a flexible grouping model, which means that when I'm getting my special education reading or math instruction <coughs> and, and the, the student in the class next door needs it, they can walk across the hall and join the group. So we're looking at opening, breaking down the walls of instruction and providing support in a more flexible way and using all of the support services to include at the Elmwood and, and Center School, uh, between the two of them, there's five and a half reading specialists. We can be using those teachers to be providing support for special education students as well. Um, do you want to add in anything? No, I think that um, I think it's a great question. It's a question that, that we have as well and that we're thinking about very seriously because, no, we don't want to go into next year having a plan that's not going to work. So yeah. you know, we're committed to whatever plan we put forth that needs to work. And we also talked about a lot about it can't be just a one-year plan. This budget does not support jumping into a full co-teaching model. It, it's a gradual uh, process. And what does that process look like over next year, the year after, and then again in the third year? So, um, you know, I think that's important. And I agree with you. You know, we're, we're spending a lot of time making sure that we have Plan A and we have Plan B and Plan C that all meet the needs of the kids. And I will just stress that nowhere in this budget, when I've, we, we've been challenged to go back and look to see where we could make additional suggested cuts or anything that could be deferred, never was special education ever looked at. We know that there's nothing there um, that would not affect, any additional cuts would absolutely affect the program. So you will not see anything coming out of special education. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. 
I just have uh, you know, just one question. So you know, I, I like the uh, discussion about where the administrative needs are. You're being pretty dynamic on moving where you feel it's <coughs> needed and without a net increase. I think that's good. I had one question on the full day kindergarten. If the plan is to p use the extra space in the Elmwood school um, from in terms of a principal or assistant principal, does the principal or of the Elmwood school take over that responsibility no. or is it the center school having to She'll be on the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's her responsibility, they're her students, it's um, the, the piece that, that Dave and Lauren talked about is obviously is if there's a behavioral emergency, they're in his building, he certainly would be involved at the first level. If there was anything building based, like a problem in the classroom, and Lauren deals with this already with the preschoolers who are her responsibility housed in the middle school. Um, the, the first line of, re of defense or response for a building issue goes to the building principal, which would be Mr. Youngberg. The curriculum, the program, evaluation, assessment would, would still be under um, Lauren's direction. And the added bonus is that we have Meredith Eckwall, who um, oversees the curriculum implementation, assessment, and professional development in all three buildings, who would also be between those two buildings anyway. Um, so and she and she's in constant okay. communication with all of them. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that in terms of the <coughs> budget, how can things change based on the mm -hmm. decisions that are made? So I right. think you answered. Right. So essentially none this year. None. And to clarify, because it's come up a couple times, and I don't think anybody's suggesting otherwise, but I want to make sure it's clear. You're not recommending a model. No. That puts first no. grade or kindergarten sections at Elmwood. You have a contingency plan exactly. if your recommendation is not adopted in full either by this committee or by the town. Yes. Your recommendation would be a plan that involves all of that being housed at center school. Yes. Okay. So our first option would be something that's in the capital budget modular units for center school. So we're all on one campus, so to speak. But we do not want to have full day kindergarten contingent upon that. So that is our our plan B, full day K, can, will still occur. We just might need to look at locations for students. But we have the sta space for that, so we're fortunate that we have another backup if we need. Thanks. Good. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Very good. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for being here. And um, given that you have buildings to open early in the morning, I would recommend that you head home. You're always no. welcome to stay. No, it's okay. a riveting oh, conversation. <laughs> but if you have to leave because you have homework, please feel free no, to you go. Um, oh, good. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 you always have to give them that opportunity. Okay. Thank you. So now we're at, oh, at we just took care of uh, <coughs> item A, B, and C, Center Elmwood Hopkins School Budget Discussions. We are on D, FY15 Revised Budget Discussion. Thank you. Okay. All righty. <coughs> so we we are uh, we're using tonight's meeting to complete all of the conversations on the pieces of the budget, and we've had some um, revised recommendations that we just went through and uh, that we've gone through across the other nights. We have some data that we asked for that's been provided for us. Um, we have one more meeting after this, which is the 30th, next Thursday, which is the meeting we have scheduled for our public hearing on the budget. And then our budget, according to the town charter, is due to the town manager by February 1st. So we are planning to have our conversation today have our public hearing next Thursday and then take a vote on the meeting, uh, excuse me, on, an, on a budget number to send to the town manager. So before we go into to this item, we had uh, the timeline sent to us from the superintendent the town manager asked us to um, make note of. So I just went over that key dates, but I also want to remind you, if you have uh, printed this out, that it looks like on February <coughs> 25th, the town manager will submit a comprehensive draft budget and draft budget message to the Selectman Appropriations and School Committee at a regular Board of Selectmen meeting. So we don't have an invitation to attend a joint meeting, but it looks like 
we could potentially be receiving one of those. So if you have a heads up, that might help, February 25th, 2014. And then it says March 4th, tentative proposed Board of Selectmen working session with department heads, which would be at the fire station. That's, that's what it says on the calendar. Then it also says March 11th, 2014, the Board of Selectmen will adopt budgets <coughs> and submit to the Appropriation Committee on or before March 15th. So they are planning this for their March 11th meeting. So if we have other meetings that we believe we should go to, or that we will believe, believe we will be invited to, I wanted to just point this out, that this was an attachment that Dr. McLeod sent to us. And um, I also want to point out, we had an email come this afternoon from uh, Jamie Helen from the town manager's office about the form that is to be completed for each article. And so we need to make sure that we um, meet the deadline. I think it, I, th I thought it said like March 6th each article needs to go uh, on that form and I know that you're going to handle that but it w is a great advertisement for um, the other piece of material that's in our packets this week. When we met earlier in the year as it says on 1029 and 125 we put together a prioritized list of capital articles and we included in our conversation that we would revisit each one of those so that's the other reason that this is on the agenda for item E, so, uh, yes. and then you also provided a copy of potential adjustments for the budget. Uh, did, did you yes, they have, have copies it. of that as well? Yeah. So that's what we should have in front of us. And uh, there was one other yes, attachment is enrollment. Yes. You gave us an, an yes, updated David. enrollment. I do have so paper copies if people didn't have I passed all those you down. You have them too? Great. Okay. So we're on D then. We're up to D and uh, it is FY15 revised budget discussion. So Dr. McLeod, do you have more that you'd like to share with us? Yes. Last week, uh, at this time, last week, we um, you asked me to look at um, full day kindergarten as a priority item. Um, and what the cost implications would be if we included it in uh, tuition free and so we will not say free as was pointed out tonight but tuition free full day kindergarten and what that would look like uh, I presented a including full day kindergarten at that time last week it would mean a 5.6 percent increase and acknowledge that that's a very high a, a lot of money to ask for uh, you asked me to go back and look at um, where we could look at additional potential uh, adjustments, which you mm -hmm. see here, potential adjustments. And Mr. Dumas and I have worked um, since then uh, line by line through every, all, all across the budget um, <coughs> to see where that might happen. And, and our hope tonight is to go through this line by line. Mr. Dumas, as you can see in the, in the third column, each time has in, has indicated what that would mean if we were to um, <clears throat> either increase we we have some potential reductions in fees included tonight as well as some additional cuts um, and what that would mean for the budget um, it's meant not as a prioritized list but as a list for us to use for conversation uh, it's basically including everything it also is a list that does not affect program, as I said earlier tonight, at any of the other buildings. It doesn't affect special education. It makes some tough decisions about things that can be deferred, but I would be thinking, I would be looking next year to be having that same conversation about things that can be deferred and prioritizing what absolutely has to happen. And finally, the projected FY cost of kindergarten using multiple scenarios is included because in response to um, <coughs> suggestions about including either a sliding scale or tuition based option I asked Mr. Dumas to to, to do that up um, and you'll see it with um, charging tuition at a, thir at a reduced rate of 3500 and then a, a tuition reduced rate, rate of 3000 and what that um, looks like so I provide we provide all of that information as a means to um, begin a discussion um, but the things that are included as potential uh, adjustments I have to say um, anything else would absolutely have an effect at the classroom level class size teacher cuts there's nowhere else to 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 go um, it was it was tight when we started 
and bringing full day K on as a tuition free option um, just presented additional, additional challenges because the budget I brought you from the beginning was one where we had already gone through um, and, and presented what we felt was, was doable. So with that, I, I don't know how you want to go through this, Nancy. Um, should you want to discuss each line? Yeah, I think we need some preliminary that, thoughts. Yeah, that's us. what I think. Okay. That might give us some guidance Great. on what we're going to spend time on. So why don't you start? Thank you. Welcome. Um, li like I said, um, I'll probably be the bad guy tonight, but, um, and, and John, just going back to something you, you said earlier, I, I don't disagree. I, I know the amount of work you've all put into crafting all of this, and I know um, the choices you've been making on, in many areas. Um, and frankly, everything is a value add, right? I mean, I don't disagree that, that additional secretarial time or, exact, you know, whatever is a value add. The question is, can we really afford all the value adds? Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about a, a, a large, an increase larger than, than I've ever seen in this town since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, and so th that's my concern. I mean, my, you know, the 4.4% we started with, to me, was a high number. Mm -hmm. I understand that that's based primarily on the teacher's contract. And that's fine. I mean, that is the way it is. And, and I understand just from conversation that, that, that it seems like um, the town manager and the selectmen at least understood that, you know, right? And, mm -hmm. that, and that there was kind of an understanding that 4.4 was pretty close to kind of where we had to be. Mm -hmm. um, but. I think adding things on top of that is going to be real difficult. And mm -hmm. and remember, it's not just like like you said earlier. It's not just passing it through this committee. It's not just passing it through the um, selectmen's office. It's getting the townspeople to vote for the budget, mm -hmm. right? And that that has to be the primary thing we think about. Um, mm -hmm. So that being said, um, yeah, let's. Maybe, maybe I would agree going through each of these items probably makes some sense, but. Right. You have preliminary thoughts? I do. Of your own or thoughts on I, his I, thoughts? I, Cause I, I, well, I'm going <laughs> to respond to something, So, and this is probably a philosophical disagreement. I, I disagree that our primary thought needs to be what we can get past town. Our primary thought needs to be what's the right budget. And. I keep coming back to the fact that this 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 full day I mean this full day kindergarten is obviously the, the big so the big nut here right it, it's 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 what it's it's the 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 four hundred twenty thousand dollars and and even a lot of these things I understand we keep talking about what we can and can't do in terms of what we can and can't afford we can't afford we keep coming back to the fact that we we cut things every year that we can't afford to cut anymore and we've heard the superintendent and the principals all come through and say we've we've done all we can and anything else we do impacts the classroom level. And so I, I think it's our responsibility to pass the most value-add budget we can to the town and not to think about, well, do we need to put together a budget that, that, that you know, have whether or not it's going to pass be our first option. Yes, we have to get a budget passed, but it's our responsibility to put the right budget out there. I'm just trying to be realistic. Well, I, but, I, but, I, but I, think, I, I think if we're realistic and we say this is what, this is what the school district needs, and, and, you know, what we've asked the professionals to do is to go back, you know, after last week, we, had a, you know, we, we asked them to put full day K tuition free as a, as a priority item. And we all looked at it and we said, look, 5.6% is a big number. Is there anything you can do? And they went back and they made some hard decisions. They put, in, they put back in the 10% tuition, the, not tuition, the 10% fee cut to continue something that we put in place last year to help broadly reduce the cost to the user that we've had that we've had growing in this town for some time. And so, you know, this is a 10% cut in athletic fee. It's a 10% cut in parking fee. It's a 10% cut in, in the bus fee. I, these, we, we heard it even tonight that these are, these are costs that people want to see brought down too. Um, to me, I, what I'll say is, and maybe I'm the only one on this one, I don't want to go line by line tonight because I don't want to sit here and debate whether or not Twelve hundred and fifty dollars for a you know secondary curriculum director's professional development is money we should cut or not cut because that that's their job, 
And, and I think we need to decide what the strategic priorities are and what we want to support as an, as an overall budget number. And to go line by line is, I mean, to me, it's insulting to them. <laughs> and and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not our job to, to go through these individual line items. And I, I, I will sit through it if we do, but I really hope that we're not going to go through every one of these items. Well, let's see well, what happens on, on yeah. this side of the table. Let's see what other John, people are thinking. let me just thinking. respond real quick. I think the reason, w now this is not a, a list of budget items. This is a list of possible reductions based on the fact that we want to include full day kindergarten at 5.58%, right? It's not, these aren't, these aren't items that, these were all items that were in the budget. Right. And we asked them, we said, we want full day K in there, but we want you to come back and see what you can cut. And they did it. And so I think to then go, okay, but I don't know if I want to cut this. Okay, well then, I'll tell you right now, I don't support a 5.03% budget. Okay. I don't. I will not. Okay. I mean, that's, if we don't want to talk about any of it, that's fine. We but will. I'm not no, going. we're we going to talk about it. We will. We no. have, Last, that's why <coughs> we have all the options Last here. week we asked mm -hmm. uh, for the information so that we could right. decide whether or not full-day kindergarten would be a priority initiative in a budget yep. that we put forward. A few weeks earlier, we had asked about um, the data on reducing fees 10 percent because in the past two years that had been a priority initiative. Absolutely. And so whether we could keep that as a priority initiative in the yep. budget that we move forward is, is what we're going to work to decide as well. So yeah, I, I, I think that you both have good points and I think we'll absolutely um, need to just round it out with, with the rest of the group so that we have good expectations about what our next step is. So. Why don't, Ellen, why don't you let us know what it is that, that you, what's your reaction to, to what we've got here? So, I don't, I don't know my, now, now I'm like moved right. past yeah. my immediate okay. reaction. But I do, <laughs> listening to Scott, okay, 5.03% is, is not acceptable to him and, and may not be acceptable to many others. Where, what percentage are we at if you look at options one, two, and three? Like, what are we really talking about? Is it, or, do you know what I'm talking, and I'm looking at the second page of this. So, right. option one is what gets us to 5.03. Oh, I guess, so obviously, option, option two and three, two and tuition. three they're going to, we're going to be down. less than 4.4. 4. No. Oh, yeah. No. No, it will not be less than 4.4. 4. Where, so do we know where we'll be at option two? What we'll be asking for? It would be with option two, Ralph. <coughs> Yeah, uh, because this is a savings. Think if you yeah, cut everything, it would be lower than 5.03. No. I think she's just looking at the with the 420 4 .4 number. 4 .4 yeah. Yeah. If it were the one of these numbers. Yeah, I mean these look like the same. If you took the whole this. list mm -hmm. uh, and you subtracted 76,306, which is the option savings two. on option number two, you'd have a budget of 37,298,248. Mm -hmm. Compare that to this year's budget, it would be 4.81. That's for uh, option two on this list right, right here. And you do the same kind of math for right. option three. Right. And you'd and come up option three would be higher. And option two is $3,500 tuition. Right. Option yeah. three is $3,000 tuition. Correct. So option three would be somewhere between 4.81 and 5.03. So 4.9. Yeah. 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 So even with paid full day kindergarten, we're still at 4.8%. So this can't really be a decision about whether or not we're going to approve full day kindergarten. Well, we were at 4.0%. 4.04. Yeah, but, you 4 .4. but we didn't have the yeah. 10% fee cuts in there. Fee right. right. You asked us to go back and, and include the fee cuts. Yeah. So that brought us higher again. That was the difference between the 4.4 and, and yes. I mean, I just want to make sure that, that no one's thinking that we're going from 5.03 back to 4.4 looking at the budget that we're being presented with today, even if we eliminate full day kindergarten well, break. Well, you'd, have to, you'd have to reduce fees again. You'd have to okay. take that out. No, that's or you'd have to not reduce fees again. That's what I meant. Yeah, or go somewhere or else. Or reduce, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Or reduce or fees lesser else. than 10%. You can have 10%. a 4.4% 4 .4 budget right. increase. It's possible. <coughs> right, it's I can, it's gonna, I can it's cut teachers. It's going to be some pain. Yep. I can right. cut yeah. teachers mm -hmm. and, yep, you know. That was a good question. So then, my other question is, and maybe this is a little bit naive, but when I, when I think about zero-based budgeting, what we were talking about doing this year, 
how do we automatically, I mean, how did we get to 4.4%? Is it, I mean, it's just that outside of the teachers, why are we seeing that increase? Like, in, is there, can, be, can there be like a general summary? Why do we not end up with just the teacher salary increase? Why do we need all of these additional things? So I feel like that's what we've been doing all month. I feel like, you know, the initial presentation in December was about this is the number that we're coming in at. Um, it's the number that was provided based on not knowing what our initiatives were. So we were working a little bit blindly, as I've said, but we wanted to at least work within having the ability to provide some initiatives and to support some initi initiatives moving forward. Um, uh, Co-teaching at, at special education, for example. Um, so each of the presentations that principals have made have been really answering that question about this is why 4.4, beyond, as Scott said, beyond personnel. So um, those, are, those are the things that are valued while maintaining, you know, that first presentation where I talked about actually this is the point, this is the discretionary point that we're really talking about. Um, it's not a lot of money, it's not a huge percent of the budget that we have to play with if we want to in continue to in, you know, provide improvements and prepare for initiatives. Um, technology was huge. We talked about that. We've made some cuts, but the, tech, the, the requirements around technology to prepare for a well-maintained program, it, it's expensive. And that's something that, that we all struggle with. Every district does. Um, so I've talked about two. I talked about SPED. I talked about um, uh, in technology. Um, so I guess at I the mean, middle school, the team, the whole team approach, we could go back and say, can't do that. That was huge. That was adding on three teachers to be able to maintain a program that we believe in, which is, which is a teaming program at the middle school. We added that on. So those are, you know, overall, they, they've been programmatic changes that improve the educational experience. So that's sort of where I wanted to get to. Are we... What's maintenance versus what's improvement versus what's initiative? And I wanted to sort of uh, and not put you on this, but give an opportunity to, to talk about what's an initiative versus what do we maintain? Like, what was the cost for maintenance and what's an initiative that I made a priority, whether it's the co-teaching model or, or full-day kindergarten? Because I think that that's the way we kind of start to look at it is what are the initiatives and what are, what are your priorities? Because I, I, I want to support your priorities. I just want to know what you see as maintenance. We, we had to. What you see as improvements and what you see as your initiatives. Well, none of my initiatives are on this list. I can put it that way. What's the list that you see in front of you about potential adjustments. So the initiatives have all been supported at, through the 4.4% budget. They were all supported through that. What all came? One. No. <coughs> It was, full day K was not, tuition free full day K was not a priority initiative at the beginning of this process. Right. Right. And I've said repeatedly that if I'd been here through a whole cycle, it absolutely would have been. And we might have been looking at a different story. For example, I might not have been able to, I would have had to, had, a, had to have had a difficult discussion about whether or not we are able to bring on the additional three teachers at the middle school. That's the only place we brought on additional teachers this year the only place and we did it to support a programmatic change that I believe is very important um, if I had had a different lens at that time I don't know I, I, I would have probably had to have that weight in order to be able to bring in full day K so this came on after that initial discussion um, because I'd only been here for two months and my decision was you know again I've said this but do we just do we let that wait um, and I'm looking at uh, my children, children whose first year is not going to, we're not going to get it again. So I felt that no, I can't. And, and when um, charged with, well, see what you can do, it's going to, it's going to be a lot, but you have the support, you have the support of the people in the town who believe it's important, you have the support of the selectmen, um, at least verbally, saying that, you know, see what you can do. Um, and the town manager who approached Mr. Dumas and myself, um, uh, that's aware. where I'm coming from. Yeah, uh, the, the town manager is aware of the 5.8% <coughs> number, and right now 
uh, we're at 5.0, 5.03, and the preliminary reaction was positive. Uh, it was not dead on arrival uh, when we had that conversation. So. And, I, and you know, unfortunately for me, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that because it goes to a deeper issue, right, which is are we within the two and a half levy limit or are we going into that that quote-unquote excess reserve that's hanging out there over all of our heads because I don't want to go I mean and I don't think the town meeting will want to go in, in mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's just my view yeah, we've um, heard nothing about that uh, about so there's uh, enough growth you know, well, perhaps we're, we're uh, it, it will go into the excess reserve yeah I mean at what level, at what level? You know? add on what the cost of full-day kindergarten is that will go into the but why Hmm? I mean, how do we know that? What's, I, mean, I haven't seen any. Yes, we don't know what the other. I have the latest. Departments. Budget. I saw it last night, so um, it's currently not in there. So all the excess, um, the, new, the new growth, or whatever, it's already calculated in our potential budget. So right now we're it's right at. we're right near the two and a half. Um, for the for the year well, we're over we're actually seen, okay. if you give me but a second I, I can come up with the actual we should, number we should know that Mike, so if we well, can well, get that yeah, while Mike's looking at that I'd, I'd also point out that I, I don't know whether um, uh, the numbers that uh, that we're talking about tonight include the chat the um, the increased state aid uh, in the governor's budget uh, which came out yesterday uh, which had an increase in chapter 78 I think in the eighty thousand dollar range uh, there were some decreases in um, municipal aid, uh, but there were also decreases in the assessments uh, from the state to the town. So net net, I think it was like sixty-five thousand uh, dollars more coming to the town. So we'll so so in two thousand. I'm sorry, yep. you're about to ask the question. Yes. So in for our two thousand fourteen budget, last town meeting, we had an excess levy capacity of two point one million dollars. Um, with our projected fiscal budget for 2015, we'll have 1.3. And a lot of that was, you know, you probably don't remember what I was up there speaking last year, is that we're trying to, we had some extra expenses last year because of the MSBA funding for, all, for an old middle school project that was like a sudden one shot, $600,000. So we kind of did some creative ways of letting the excess levy capacity go up, but using other methods to, so our overall impact was kind of level. So that's why that's dropping, the excess levy capacity is, is dropping over a million dollars. But that's what it is. So anything additional, you know, it has all the new, the new growth has everything in on this projected budget. So anything on top of 4.4% will have to come out of that. Well, and, well, and essentially just so, it comes out, it comes out of the- just to be clear what that is, right? Is, is that saying that the, the tax levy will go up higher than 2.5%, right? Oh, absolutely, yes. Right. Meaning there will be an impact directly to the taxpayer in the town. Right. So, and, and my only, my only, I guess, maybe question or concern about that analysis is that that's above the 4.4, and you said this is directly related to the cost of full day um, kindergarten, but it's not, because as we just, as Ralph just told us, we're at 4.8, so we're going into, it's not a result of full day kindergarten. Well, you're going to be getting my, the original proposal was 4.4%. That's, that was the, I know you didn't call it the superintendent's budget, it was your preliminary budget. But then, this is from my observation for sitting here the last couple of weeks, so then you wanted to put in the possibility of, of tuition-free kindergarten. And I see you've added that at the top on your new list now to bring that overall cost down, you're, you're cutting out additional items. But I have questions on the additional items mm -hmm. and, and specifically it's at a cost of you know the high school the middle school or whatever you're, you're, you're pulling things from the budget there to, to pay for this program uh, and as other members have said you really don't want it you really want to do that but what's going to happen in subsequent budgets next year you're going to try you know you, what your lost textbook book reserve I know it's only seven thousand dollars but what happens if somebody loses a textbook or or do you have to replenish that next year? I mean, how, how does this impact future budgets? So I'm not, I know you're trying to find ways. I, I was happy with 4.4%. I was very happy with the original budget, and you got the freedom to make 
adjustments as you felt necessary for the goodness of, of, the, of the students. Well, we haven't made any yet. Right. Haven't made anything. But no decisions say, yet. But, I, but the other thing I want to say is that um, while you're providing a, 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 some specific numbers, I think the overall point is that we're one piece, one department of a bunch of departments who have gotten a target to bring their budget in at and and we don't know what any of those are either so they could be higher than whatever it was that they had we, we don't know they pretty much we have, zero well we don't know so we haven't had that conversation yet we haven't decided a number okay. yet but I, I <clears throat> what I'd like to do is go right back to Ellen because I thought that whether it was a prompt or, or just a great question I think what you were getting was an awful lot of passion from this side of the table about what it was that you were asked at the beginning of this budget cycle was your number, what it would cost for initiatives, what it would cost, I mean you said it all on the State of the Schools Town Manager and the Board of Selectmen asked you to deliver something and so I, I thought you were doing really well there so I'd like to, even though numbers are really important, I want to kind of bring it back to what you were trying to do with that question. So did you get everything you were hoping for out of that? Do you have another question? Um, I, I have another just thought, something to, to think about, and I think that this is, um, the community might be thinking about this. If, if we only get approval to 4.4% or 4.8%, we fall somewhere under 5.03%, the, the free full day kindergarten, that's not necessarily the first thing that's going to drop out. Nope. Because as our district leader, you believe that that's where our priority budget should be. Yes. Okay. That's it. Jen, how about you? Getting around the table. Yeah, so I'm not even really sure what the question is to me at this point. Is it do I want to go through here line by line? Yes, is I it try. what are my philosophies and priorities for the budget? Um, <coughs> I, so I guess a couple of things. I think, you know, in listening to this conversation back and forth between Dr. McLeod and Ellen, um, I think that's exactly what the Board of Selectmen is looking for in, their, in the budget message, message that they gave us, right? Is basically anything over and above, we need, to, we need to understand why, and that's what you're talking about. What are your initiatives? Why are they important to you? And what are, you know, that, that are driving this budget? So, um, so just to, to chime in as well on that, I think it's important, however, wherever we end up, that that's how we present it. And I don't think that's going to be difficult to do, but I think that that sort of goes back to where we started with the message that we got from them in whatever month that was, October. Um, as far as this list, I don't have the need to go through it line by line. I do have some concerns about some of the items on the list, and I also um, am concerned that there may be one additional item that is not on this list based on the feedback from the parents of upcoming seniors about laptop usage. Um, what, what I was sent today from um, from Mr. Ghosh indicates that over 50% of parents so far, the numbers weren't final, were not, were not going to in one way or another be providing a laptop and so basically needing a laptop from the high school. That's more than what is in this budget. That, that, the, that number of laptops is more than what was built into this budget. So either that impacts taking it away from the waterfall process down to some of the other schools or adds additional monies. So I want to make sure that we don't lose sight of that. And I know that's not final yet. Um, well, no, the, and neither was it even in the budget to begin with. I, I thought that, um, that Ashok said that there were a portion of I have to <coughs> additional laptops. So the survey shows 91 senior parents want to participate, 29 would buy outright, 18 would lease for one year, and 46 would choose the bring your own device option. Right. 52 parents do not want to participate. Right. But the, this question has just recently come up. This was not something that we were looking at from the beginning of the budget. I asked about it when, uh, during the technology presentation. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so again, so I just, that's the only thing that I can think of that's maybe not on this list that I don't even think we could possibly have the answer to tonight, but is something that we need to It resolve. would be an addition, Jean, right? Not a reduction. You're, you're saying an additional budget item that would then raise it even higher. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. right? right? Or or it would replace something else. Or it would take the laptops that were meant to be waterfalled down away from so okay. that maybe wasn't a financial cost but a programmatic cost. Mm -hmm. So per year. Yeah. Right. So uh, right, exactly. And it's only a one year thing, but I don't have any concept in my mm -hmm. head of mm -hmm. what the cost of that would be. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. There are a couple of uh, on here. I, in general, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really comfortable with the reduction of professional development or the technology training. I know we have to make some pain. I am happy to see the fee reductions back in there. And I guess at the end of the day, what I think we need to do is be really comfortable. I almost would like to take the full day K conversation last and be comfortable with the rest of the budget yeah, and the, then make a decision. The technology training, the reason that we can reduce that is because that money was uh, earmarked to train senior teachers, teachers who will have seniors next year who have not uh, gone through the one-to-one -one, uh, process. And uh, rather than paying them a curriculum rate during the summertime, we're going to train them in June after the seniors are gone oh. because they're a captive audience right. and uh, we'll, uh, you know, do it at no cost. Okay. Okay. And I feel so better about that. So I'll one. just respond, Jean, by saying I, I, I'm concerned about these cuts too. And yeah. so I don't think we can take, take the free day, full day at the end because I wouldn't be looking to make these adjustments if we were, if it were not for being able to provide funding for the full day. So those are two, you, you know, I, I did not come tonight saying, <coughs> well, if we're not going to go with this free option, then here are all these adjustments, uh, because I also share the concerns about doing them. Well, I mean, but I'm hoping that the fee reduction is not in that category that you just mentioned. I'm mean, hoping not. that we're doing well, that's, that. That's, your pri that's the priority, yes, of of. So maybe we should start with budget. full day K. All right, well. We had a 4.4, 4.4 whatever percent budget that we ended up with before we got to full day, to considering full day day, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, maybe we should talk about that first. So I, I, I don't know how inappropriate or appropriate this is, but I, you heard the conversation. I've now had two public forums, many, many presentations, <coughs> and, and the state of the schools. You know how I feel. Absolutely. It's, it's your budget now. I, I, you know my feelings, and I think that the conversation is not this way anymore. Okay. I think the conversation is what does the school committee want to support? Um, and I, with absolute respect to the difficult decisions that you have to make and the job that you have to do, and will work within either way of what you decide, I will provide an effective program. Well, that's, that's very fair. Well, well right. let, maybe if I'll just start. Okay. Is that in in our budgetary constraints? I do not support moving to full day kindergarten right now. I don't see how we can sustain that budgetarily. It, it's you know it is a definitely I understand you know we've talked directly, and I understand programmatically why it, it's such a great idea, and I and I don't I'm not going to disagree with any of it, but the reality is we need to get a budget pat that this town will support, and and I'm not sure that you're going to get the majority of people in this town to support in this kind of increase, right, for, for a full day kindergarten, not just because of the budget number, but because there, I think, are a lot of people who are going to question the need for it, frankly. And, you know, I mean, you're going to completely disagree with me. I know that, but I don't, I don't know what else to say, I, uh, you know. Well, I, I think we should start with the full day K conversation and, and one of the things that I think we all agree on is that whatever it is that we want to pursue, we want to pursue it in a thoughtful manner and in a way that it will be successful. And so over the course of the last several weeks with, with respect to this particular topic, I am ruminating on um, the fact that the current strategic plan, which some believe is is obsolete, lists that we were pursuing as an initiative providing full day kindergarten for all who wanted it. And that 
is very different than providing a full day kindergarten program. Just, it's a, it's a big leap, as you've seen in the email that I've sent out to everybody who's written about their, their, their support of full day kindergarten. So we've been pursuing something for all who want it, and now we're making the leap, and it may be the right program leap, absolutely. But it's going to take people some time, as you've heard, um, to get their head around the fact that they may not have a choice anymore. And if we are taking that option off the table on the 30th by approving a budget that eradicates a half-day option, then they'll feel it now. Or if we wait until we open up a building, hopefully, whether it's new, renovated, whatever it is, that has the space for it, and suddenly people realize we no longer are offering half day, they're going to feel it then. So I'm, I, I think that all of the forums that you're having and all the conversations that you're having with people is um, it's sort of like the growing pains of us moving to that. And I, I want to make sure that whatever we do is done well and thoughtfully, and it can't please all the people. But I'm, I'm concerned that moving to a full-day kindergarten-only program next year is, is risky, given how much this budget would cost and how much it could cost either to purchase modulars or lease modulars for several years. I'm concerned about that because... I want a solution for center school, and we're going to be asking this community to put up millions of dollars to build that. And so mm -hmm. while I believe that that program has merit, I, I think changing people's behaviors and taking away the choice, which they, if they believe everything that you've explained, they wouldn't want. They, they want what you're offering. I, I'm just concerned that it's not going to be smooth for next year, which doesn't mean I don't support it and doesn't mean that I don't think it's the right direction for us to go, but I, I think that's too much to go. Too many eggs in one basket and, the, and it's got to do with people's dollars for next year. So we do know that we are not taking away choice. Parents can choose not to participate. Yes. So that is, needs to be clear. Choice is still there. They can also choose to hold their child back and have them start the following year. Those are two choices that are still there. Um, I, I, need to, I need to say that. Um, I agree, Nancy. We need to do this thoughtfully, and we need to do it in a way that's going to be successful, and we need to respect the voice of the people in the town. That's always been what I've said. That's why when I first started talking about this, I presented what I called three options, because it was important to me that I I, I'm here to represent all of you. I'm here to to work for the town, not for my own agenda. So I'm presenting educational benefits, but I'm also giving options in terms of how it can happen. Um, and I'm being very honest and open about what these choices will mean. It might be useful for us to wait to find out how many people actually are interested in that choice. I would predict that it would be very few. But I would want to have the conversation when you say you check the half-day K box. Was it because you don't think you can afford it? Because I'll make sure you're going to get in. If you checked it because you want to maintain the option to have that, quote, choice, then I would challenge us to say, of 189 families, are they going to affect the decision because they want to maintain that choice for their child for another year. So I think that is, real, as you say, about being thoughtful as we, as we do this and make this difficult decision. I think that's really important data to have. It, it, can I just say real quick, I think it is important to have, right? At the same time, and I, and I understand and I completely appreciate how thoughtful you are in this process, believe me, I, I know you are. Um, but. I think we need to all just focus or, or think about the fact that the people in the town are more than the 189 families and or people that will be having children in the next 10 years. There are a lot of other people in this town, right? 
And the question is, can you get programmatically all those people to support full day kindergarten at town meeting when it's going to be a massive increase in the budget? That's the question, John. I mean, I know. So I, I disagree. It's the question. I think it's a question once we pass a budget. The first question for us is what's the right budget? And then we can figure out how to build support for passage of our budget. Our, our job is to pass a responsible budget. But we could have a budget of 25%. And no, have I, every, I, every but I, but I don't, we but, I, but again, I, I, don't, <coughs> I mean, that's, that's farcical. I mean, it's, it's, um, well, so but, 5.8%. But, but, but um, well, we're looking at a highest of 5.03. Um, so, no, no, so that, we're not, John. That, that's why when you said let's not go through this list, these are a list of No, cuts. this is, this is what, this is what the superintendent has come back to us and said this is the budget and that I she wants to push forward. And I have huge questions of, so what some of, uh, it's whether some of these are even possible to I, cut. Why would they have brought them to us if that's, they're not possible to cut? If, I, if I'm not allowed to ask them, how would I know the answer? I, I guess I just put more faith in them. <laughs> I, I, the, 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 to me, the, we talk about being thoughtful and we talk about the, the data that, you know that um, this started with a conversation in November that built interest in the in the concept of where are we going with the early childhood program. This this start and and, and we, we talk about you know hearing hearing the voice of the town, recognizing that there are 189 families you know or so who will be sending children to kindergarten and more who will be sending children to kindergarten in the future, and that they don't represent all the town. Since we've started having this discussion. We, We've gotten a fairly large amount of communication, as much as I could remember on, on any topic on this, and, and it's been decidedly in favor of a tuition-free full-day kindergarten program. Last week we had a, a, a lot. I don't know. I mean, it filled up this place. People here, and we asked them to raise their hands to indicate what their level of support was, and they were all here with, with maybe a handful of exceptions to support a tuition-free full-day kindergarten and program. And what percentage of those people would benefit from the program, John? Well, but, but I guess my question is, what, so, so, so right. the people who aren't, okay. who aren't communicating with right. us were supposed to infer what they want. Yep. I, the, other, the other piece to this is, is you know, and Nancy, you, you talked about the risks associated with it. I have actually significant concerns about the tuition-based model that, is, that was originally proposed in the sense that how many how many kindergartners are we actually going to end up with in a full day or in a half day section? Are we talking about if the vast majority of people want to put their children in full day K, we're going to make it available to them at a sliding scale tuition? We could end up with one half day section of nine kids that we've got to run five buses for at noontime to get them home. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and we're and we and by doing this, we have we've heard what we are doing is we're giving people the choice. But we're giving people the choice, and we are providing for those half-day students a lesser program. I, and I heard, I'm not I, comfortable with that. I know, but I think I think what we're talking about, oh, and I'm not disagreeing with you. But but what I'd like to infuse into the conversation is the assumed vision that we would be eradicating the half-day option with the opening of a new building. That that's what yeah. we've been talking about or we've been talking around and I think we need to be talking about it out loud because maybe yep. more people would be questioning saying I didn't know you were doing that I thought it was always going to be that you could choose this or you I could don't choose think, that. I don't think it's automatic. So that's that's I what I mean by thoughtful conversation and, and I know that time is of the essence mm -hmm. and I know that thoughtful conversation takes time and that's all I'm saying is that I think these are really fruitful conversations. I know you've just arrived, in essence. We've been talking about moving to full day since 2005 or 2002, and look at where we are. Mm -hmm. We're not that far. So, Scott, I just wanted to, because you weren't here earlier, but you know, in response to the people that came out last week, that's why I, I, and I said last week that there'd be opportunity for more conversation and then invited in response to some of the concerned um, citizens that were writing to all of us to have a forum tonight. And it was also well attended. I would say that there were 30, 35 people there. Mm -hmm. And from across, people that had concerns, people who were very vocal about their concerns, um, across the grade levels and across the, f for different reasons. So I just would say, you know, we've heard those voices too, um, 
and 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 so they're certainly being being listened to. So let's let's continue to focus just on this piece right now, just to see where we are, because w whatever happens when we get to the budget, whether we were for a part of it or not for a part of it, when we vote a budget on the 30th, we are all for it. We, we all need to talk about the consensus opinion of this group. So let's have a discussion. We can debate a little bit more tonight, but this is the big uh, piece that we're talking about, um, either carrying forward mm -hmm. to have people look at through the public hearing process next week, or parking it for next year. So um, we haven't decided anything on that yet. So let's spend a few more minutes about this before we decide whether or not we are also including as a priority initiative fee decreases for next year. So I, I feel somewhat confused um, because I asked the question about how the percentage would change if we took free full day off the table. And I think the answer is 4.8%. 1.8, so right? No, the total budget increase would be 4.81%. I think we'd have to be uh, a little bit more That's careful because the budget that we have right now Sorry. assumed uh, that there would be 10 full-day K classrooms, no half-day K classrooms. And so <coughs> the tuition revenue assumed that everybody or 90% of all the kids um, would be paying. So if you went to... Um, Say you had two sections of half day K, you'd reduce a teacher, uh, but you'd lose more revenue, I believe, than um, the cost of a teacher. So there would be a slight uh, tick up uh, in the budget from 4.4 to something else. And honestly, I, I'd, prefer, I'd, I'd just like to ask you not to ask me what that number would be, <laughs> because I'd prefer to take it back to my office. And, have the right number. We won't ask numbers, you that. Okay. So where are you with that, Ellen? So when I look at these other reductions, I, I do, I sort of echo what John was saying, that I have to trust that when Dr. McLeod and Ralph went through the other budget that these were possible. And then this idea that, um, and may, so, Two things. One, I, I currently pay for my youngest to go to full-day kindergarten. I will, I will not benefit from a free full-day kindergarten program. Um, and I think that's important because I think that people watch us and they think that th John and Ellen are, full free, are for free full-day kindergarten because they will benefit. I will not benefit. Um, I'm for it because of the equity, and I think someone spoke to that um, at, the, at the forum that we had earlier, or because of the disparity. Um, once you start charging a tuition on what we'll have in the two programs, it, it truly concerns me. <clears throat> um, but when I, and th maybe this is, I don't think that people should look at it the way Scott is looking at it, which is um, I'm not going to benefit or this is only a small population because we're talking about the education of our district. And someone pointed out this Perry study, which dollar for dollar, kindergarten is the best place to spend your money. Um, I think I saw it was a secondary site, so, but it was citing research that was for every dollar spent in kindergarten, your return on investment is three dollars. Um, and I think that's important. That's important because we're talking about the educational system of the district. And then I think that w let's look at other programs that aren't state mandated or that we offer. Let's look at foreign language. Let's look at athletics. After you subtract the fees, how much does the district spend on this? It's athletic programs. Is that more than 420,000? Are we, is, is that population a greater percentage of the K-12 population? I just, I'm, I'm worried that not only might we hear it from the community, but we're sort of talking about it up here, that, that this is a small population that we should be concerned about. We should be concerned about, at least at this table, the education of the entire district. And kindergartners are included, and we spend that amount of money as far as I can tell, on other programs that my kindergartner doesn't benefit from. But I, I, can't, I can't sit at this table and do that analysis. That would be wrong. But, but, but you're looking to add right now, as opposed, and you, you're talking about things that people that, I mean, obviously <coughs> when they came, when you brought them to us as part of your original budget, right, at the 4.4%, there was a reason why they were there. Mm -hmm. There was a reason why everything that was in there was in there, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it 
and I, I don't disagree with you in that, but it was, a, it was a broad spectrum over the entire system that we were providing service. Now we're talking about taking service away from every other grade. Mm. Uh, where, where so is, is this unnecessary money? Do we not need this in the original budget? I mean, it, that's tough decisions. It was I was I was asked to make it a priority item. I, I supported <coughs> that decision um, to make it a priority Don't this we need year. The extraordinary maintenance this year. Well, we've been talking for years yeah. now about how we have to we have money in for maintenance. It says reduce. It doesn't say get rid of. $48,000. It's one of the bigger... It's a lot of money. It, it's, it's the original budget had a $98,000 increase. And for a reason. And, excuse me? For a reason. Well, the, the items that are delayed, center school water bubblers for $5,000, Hopkins bathrooms, it's, you know, replacing some partitions. You, you can't tell me that they can't wait another year. That was like $5,000. They're going to wait. Okay. The uh, um, energy Except management system. Uh, Al's more concerned about the high school one uh, because he's afraid it'll crash than he is the Hopkins one. And the other one is high school bathrooms. There's still quite a bit of money in there for the most top priority um, extraordinary maintenance. So do you, to, just to interject here, so to come up with this list, you went back with your team and spoke with everybody? No, we didn't go back with the whole team. There, there simply wasn't time, Nancy. But, but prior to this, you right. had the conversations well, we had with your long. team. Yes. Okay. Just, just so that it... But, no, you we, know, we're, we're, we're on specific items, for example, that impact the center school or the middle school. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we spoke to them. Of uh, course. The extraordinary maintenance, the maintenance over time. Right. And that's yeah, the only reason I asked the question is to have the answer come out loud, yeah. is so that people know that this is not a, you talked with all those folks and then you went back to your little office and said, okay, this is really what we need. So no. this has been a conversation that's continued since October. Correct. Building up to what is it that you need, yep. not what is it that you want. It Wait, was what is it that you need. At each building, well, and that's what led to with what was in the 4.4. That's right, but this is in addition, the, you know, wherever we could, not be <laughs> felt at the building level. And if it was going to be felt at the building level, then yes, there was a can this wait okay. a year conversation. Uh, I mean, how do you disallow lane changes? Well, uh, just to give you uh, some background, um, we were budgeting 40 percent of the lane changes. And early on in the process, I had a conversation with, with my assistant, Debbie, and I said, you know, we might want to think about reducing that because the history has been in the past few years that it's been between 30 and 32 percent. So what this $30,000 reduction uh, indicates is that we're only budgeting 35 percent rather than 40 percent of the, um, um, the, the gross potential lane changes. The last three years of history, says that if, if I had my druthers, if I, if, if, if I was smart enough when this first budget came out, I would have budgeted at 35 percent. We had the conversation and it never made it all the way uh, into the preliminary budget. Okay, let's see. Ellen, did you have, were you finished with? No, I mean, I don't, are we going to look at the options one, two, and three on the, yes? I want to see okay. what Jean wants to do and just so that we can kind of get a sense of what our next step is going to be because we, we are, time is marching on. Um, Okay, two, two things that I want to ask first. One is this last on the list, yep. increasing the hourly rate for rentals from $10 to $20 an hour. In order to come up with that number, I took the two largest, uh, most frequent renters. They are the HPTA and the Hopkinton Park Parks and Rec. Rec. Mm -hmm. And I added up all the uh, $10 uh, per hour charges that they had, and they totaled in the, in the last 12 months and they total $28,000. So a couple of things. One is, is the amount not in the facilities use policy? It is. So that's a whole policy change policy that we change. would have to go through. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the HBA. No, it's, it's Parks and Rec. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. And they, go, they go through, they go through yeah. okay. Parks and Rec. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that do go through um, other organizations, in particular the HPTA. Uh, there are private karate schools that 
get the use of the building through the HPTA, <coughs> right. and they're only paying ten dollars an hour right. to run a private business in in our schools. Right. But I think so. what you're pointing out is that's a whole. I'm to not get sure to we that, can, we'd have to go through a whole policy change, yeah. which isn't to to say it can't you know happen. it can't we happen. Can't happen. It's just to say it can't happen another. by next Thursday. Though. That's correct. Um, and so, okay, so that one is sort of in question. And then, um, so are we are we asking questions about the different options at this point, or are we not? So it, I think we should, okay, uh, because we've got to get to a point. And I know I know where your thoughts are, but would you be able to handle the conversation about the other options? And I thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's do that. So um, start with the question. The option two, or option three, I guess. Um, you just say what those are out loud because people don't so have them. So option two is uh, paid full day K with half day K at a reduced tuition rate of $3,500, which is about a 10% fee reduction, basically, which is what we're looking at in um, other fees. And the th option three is um, a $3,000 tuition. Built into these options, I mean, I've heard a lot of... Um, conversation around a sliding scale. It, it, is that factored in here that you're comfortable that with these numbers we really can provide it at that tuition rate on a sliding scale for anybody who wants it? I, I, can, only, I can only tell you how I did the calculation and you have to you know, make a determination as to whether that will work or not because I don't know what the uh, Right, you don't know the requests are yet. Are. We don't have a a sliding scale in place uh, to compare against um, um, applications or anything like that. What I did is uh, on both of those scenarios, if you look down below, options two and three assume that 40 of the 187 projected students will choose to attend HDK, half day K. So what I've done is I've assumed that 90% of the remaining 147 kids would pay the the um, the fee, the, mm -hmm. the full fee. So there's wiggle room there uh, to cover um, fee reductions. Now you know that right now people either pay full full price, half price, or zero. Right. Uh, there wouldn't be any zeros uh, unless it was built into a student's IEP. Yeah, IEP right. Is right. the eighty thousand dollars back in here the re from the revolving? Um, yeah. The eighty thousand is used there. It's back in. Yep. It, okay. it, it offsets that. Okay. Yep. So then okay. I have a follow-up question, which again goes to policy, and we do have a financial um, assistance policy, and I don't know if it is in the policy or in the procedures about how those calculations are made. And so again, I don't know if that's to add into a, a sliding scale, which we don't currently have. Do we have to go through the whole policy? Uh, I, the answer to the question is that the if I may, I'm sorry. Right, because we don't have anything for that that we do. It's, right. It would be procedural, and that's what you do. Uh, yes, the the policy, the policy does refer to reductions in fees, including tuition. That's right. uh, but I don't believe that the um, the grid that we use um, is in the policy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was going to look no. up the policy. I just wanted that's to make procedural. sure that this isn't yes. another. Where we have to go back and thing where we, we have more no. steps than it might seem yep. like we should yep. involved. So, um, so option two is full day kindergarten tuitioned at thirty five hundred dollars with a continued half day kindergarten option. That's correct. And, and I have to assume I need four buses at midday because okay, I, right. I don't really know. And then option three on this list is full day to full day kindergarten with a three thousand dollar tuition cost. That's correct with a continued half-day option. Do we have a policy? I'm sorry. Yes. Do we have a policy that requires that we transport kindergarten students? If they live, um, yes. So if the they half more day, than two miles. Yeah. It is not an option to provide to provide a half-day option without transportation? No, okay. no, because that, that's the program we offer. Okay. Yeah. You'll note that there, there's a, a <coughs> A discrepancy between what I'm saying here on the general supplies and what Lauren said earlier. The general supplies number actually outfits uh, three additional classrooms uh, at, at a cost of $8,000. If you had a half-day option, um, you would have one fewer classroom, 
So you, in my opinion, you could reduce the equipment, uh, the furniture, by one classroom, which is eight thousand dollars. I spoke to her about that earlier today. I think it got lost in the in, okay. in the conversations <laughs> okay. tonight. All right. So these yes. Are a bunch of quantitative numbers. I just want to. St so this question's been bouncing around. So, so this would options two and three would also provide a differentiated curriculum between full day and half day. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and and I think that's important to stress yes. because currently that is not the case. Oh, yeah. I I completely understand that. I, no, I, I, I'm actually not oh, stressing sorry. it for you. I'm <laughs> stressing it for them. Right. Okay. Um, that that having a tuition based um, still will provide the opportunity for an improved um, educational curriculum right. in the full day. And so if I, if I understand the conversation correctly, if we provide a full day experience to anyone that wants it and make, it, make certain that whether there's tuition or not, they're able to afford it, then parents who still elect not to pursue full day will understand that by taking advantage of a free half-day kindergarten program at our public schools, they will not be receiving the exact same curriculum. Nowhere near. They will be receiving at least what we're offering now, which is, you know, absolutely acceptable from state standards and, and all that. I cannot say yes to that question. The state standards, as you've seen, are, have changed so drastically that I cannot tell you. All right. Well, that let me we say it, meeting, let me say it a different way then. We're not going to reduce what we're offering in half day now. What we're going to do is we're going to provide a less stressful experience. You heard the parents tonight. It is not educationally sound to send five-year-old kids home, who have to then come off the ceiling all afternoon because they're so stressed. Yeah. It's not okay for five-year-old kids <coughs> to come to school and have their first experience in school be stressful. They should be feeling happy and excited to be there and really great about learning and those should be experiences that we're providing our five-year-olds. So it's not okay for me to hear that and we will not continue that practice. Mm -hmm. So if we have a half-day option, it will not be providing that push to make sure we get that curriculum, check it off the list. Um, that is why towns are going to full day only. Right. And every town has to take this difficult step that we're facing right now. There's one year where there's a group of parents that are frustrated that they lost the choice. I want to know how many there are. I want to know the answer to that. And, and for me to continue to provide a half-day experience for those young children at that expense, it, it, it's not worth it. Well, so that's my question, and that was my question in December, which is, you know, I mean, last year we had about 25% of the class not even apply for the lottery. And so why was that? Is it because they couldn't afford it and just didn't want to enter it, or is it because of uh, some preference? We don't is know. Is it because of a lack of, right, I understand that. Um, I guess what my, I guess every time I think about this, the word that jumps out at me the most is compromise, right? We don't have... We would like to have, m many of us would like to have a free full day K to, uh, option for everyone in, a, in a, a facility that's appropriate for that um, education to take place. And we can't have that next year. In, four years ago, we started on that mm -hmm. path and we have a compromise. We have a full day <coughs> um, option which doesn't do everything that we want it to do, but does more than what we can do in a half-day option. So what we're going to have next year is going to be another compromise of some sort because we can't have, you know, where we're going to end up. So I just, but what, I, what concerns me a little bit in the transition is because we don't know how many parents are truly dedicated, whether you agree or disagree, to, to just a half-day experience for their children. My concern that they're finding that out in May is very difficult. And you're absolutely right. They can elect not to send their child to kindergarten, or they can elect to find a private half-day kindergarten. They should, if that's going to be their choice, they need to be doing that now. Otherwise, they won't, that won't be an option that they can find by starting that process in May. So I'm, concern, I'm concerned about those people. And I, so, I don't know. 
I haven't determined exactly where I come out on this. I'm a little more inclined right at this moment to, to go with an intermediary compromise where everyone who wants it is going to be able to get it, but <clears throat> I think it will help us learn a lot more about why, how many people don't want it and why that is mm -hmm. and what it is that we may need to address about that mm -hmm. in the following year's budget mm -hmm. if we take an intermediate step. So that question that people keep asking about the statistics, we'll have them. Yeah. We will have the statistics because we will know. But I have to say that the two arguments that I've heard so far about maintaining a half-day option, they both worry me. One is because my child is so advanced and they're going to be bored. Well, what are they doing for the other half of the day because we can be providing an enrich enriched experience for you. And the other more troubling one actually is my child's not ready. What is only going to be providing a half day going to make them more ready? Now they're going to go into first grade having not been ready for a full day cave experience? That worries me too. So now the discrepancy is going to be even wider. And I, I feel that it's important for me to express that because you're asking for my educational advice and Absolutely. I'm giving it. I'm saying this is the dilemma and I share it, Scott, I do. The dilemma is providing a recommendation for the best educational experience that does not provide half day. The only way we can do that is by providing a free, and that's how we got to here. Can we do it that way? And, and I, I think as John has said, kick the can down the road and have this same dilemma next year. It would be different because I would be coming to, to forward with a different set of priorities than I had the, the first time. But the first time, <coughs> I was in a different place. Right. So, well, I mean, again. The, other, the other thing that we would know next year is um, what the space availability would be. You know, going through town meeting, if, if we continue to leave the modulars on the warrant and knowing whether the town does or does not support that, you know, I, even with parents we heard tonight, even with, and I have seen in some emails as well, even with parents who do want the full day free option, they do not want that to involve them. So there's so many, I, I don't know, I, I, um, I know. It, it's, it's a struggle. It's not because I don't, I, 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 your passion and your experience is very clear and this is what we hired you to tell us and, and I appreciate that. But I also um, want all of this to be successful and I, I don't know how big of a step the whole community is going to be willing to, to take. And I, so I would like to get us there. And I, I'm, I'm today feeling like that might take us two years instead of one year. But having said that, as I said in December, I really want to know about those other parents. I want to know how this full day, half day check mark comes out. I know, la I think last week or the week before, you mentioned that people that were interested in half day K, you and Lauren would be following up with them and having those conversations. And I think yep. that that's, you know, I think that's a great opportunity. You will have a better understanding of what the concerns are. And it may very well be that many of those concerns are addressed and we're looking at 98% <coughs> of people who want full day K. You know, we'll just, right. we'll have more of that information. So I, mean, I guess if it's a handful that we're hearing from and those are the ones that are, we're hearing from that want to maintain the option, then we need to know that. I, yes, and, the, and so I guess that's really what I'm saying. I'm, what I'm saying is right now, I'm sort of at an option two point. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna get to an option one point, but that's the data that, mm -hmm. that I really feel like I need to hear. I feel like we need to be able to convey that to other people at town meeting. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do feel like we need to be really clear um, on the rest of this list. And I, and I think it's important to reinforce what you've said, which is that you're not impacting the educational experience. You feel you're not Im impacting the educational experience of any other students in this district with this with these changes that are on the table right now. No, that that's correct. Right. Um, I, I, I do think that if we're going to go back to a tuition, no, not back, if we're going to include a tuition, a tuitioned option, then I would I would pull back some of these recommended preliminary adjustments. So, 
um, I'm, I, I think we need a not about to give up all of this in increase, Excel spreadsheet in that reduce can transportation reduce fees uh, charge kindergartners but still reduce fees and make all these adjustments I would be looking to pull back on some of those because they were only done at a huge um, pain mm. um, but I just one more if I may comment just to reinforce that we will not it will be very clear that those two programs are not equivalent. Right, and 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 I think I'm not sure how broadly that's understood. And it's so, not. Again, it's so again, not. I Even think at this that point, tonight, yeah. right. I, so I think that that this week provides you with a great opportunity because yeah. the people most directly involved you can get to. Mm -hmm. It's probably a small number. Okay, and we can start with the ones that have already registered. We don't have to wait. That's next what Thursday. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So you're. So that's where you are at this point, which is nowhere. Right? Well, it's <laughs> we got to get. I mean, we've we've got to. We've got to move forward. We're, we're not universally embraced by the community as it, at this point. I'm sorry to say that. So I doubt that that whether we put this in, it's suddenly going to make us embraced by the community or not. It's going to be an awful lot of um, angst. There, there are people who say they don't want the full day. There are people who don't want to pay for their taxes. I don't right. want there to be a, you know, a mob that forms from various factions to say, put the kibosh on it. And, and the time to put it on is at town meeting. I, d I don't want to find that out then. Exactly. So, right. I, so this is where we're not kicking the can down the lane. We're making some decisions, and people will <coughs> respond. So we've got to move towards whether or not we're including option one or option two or option three in this budget. So There is yeah. another option. Oh. <laughs> the other option is to have a half-day option uh, with no change to the uh, tuition rate. That's right, the one that's right, not which there. is which is what we had at the beginning, right. which was in the preliminary. But that assumed that everybody budget. was coming to full day K. So well, it was half day. It, it was everybody who wanted it was everybody. full day. It, it, was, it was in addition to the half day program. No, no. no the so preliminary you're saying budget assumed that everybody was coming to full day K. Four thousand. So I would have to make another. Oh, call. I never assumed that. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's, never. that's why that's why we got to 4.4. I mean, that's yeah. sort of right. a misnomer because we included right. 670,000. Right. Yeah. Because no. we we made the assumption. But okay. So yep. where am I? Where are you? I mean, my my preference is option one. Right. But with respect to the sliding scale, uh, the policy does reference the federal guidelines, the federal poverty guidelines. So. The financial assistance policy, so that does have to be changed. I mean, un unless we're saying you can't apply for a fee reduction unless you're 150 percent of the poverty guidelines, that's not a sliding scale. So that's we would have to change that offer. policy to right. offer. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I thought that I thought oh. we allowed something in the policy that said it, you it can says apply it, and have a conversation, <coughs> and the building principals decide. It says school level expenses, but then the examples of school level expenses are field trips, travel programs, music. Class dues, I don't know. That's Dances, awesome. yearbooks, and athletic wear. But not tuition. Um, tuition comes under waiver or reductions, and those are district level fees. And so that, to me, implies district level fees are different from school level fees. So anyway, tuition comes under district level okay. fees. Okay, all right. Um, but it would seem to me that uh, you could still use the federal poverty guidelines. You, is it specific? Does it say how much times? The federal? Yes. It one does. and a half times okay. the, fe so the federal poverty guidelines. So we'd have to do a policy change yeah. before May. That's a waiver <laughs> and a reduction is 200%. Okay. So it it just in the, in the current, th that, I think that's really limiting in the current economy. I think, I just, I think there are people <coughs> who are really struggling that don't make the, that. That was his point not. tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's understood. So yeah. with that. So with that and with option one being my, my first choice, I mean, then the option three with the least amount of tuition we're charging, I guess, is my second choice. I mean, I don't, I have, my problem with how we've been looking at this the whole time is that we were assuming this $4,000 tuition from every, and for 10 full day classrooms. And so the number that's out there, the six, it's going to cost us $670,000 was not right. That we came in at 4.4% and I, I'm not, I'm not saying it to disrespect yeah. it, but no, we didn't come in at 4.4 percent. We put in a chunk of money that we don't have. It was an anticipated revenue stream based on something that was never going to happen. Um, <clears throat> well, unless everyone chose full day kindergarten and, and paid a fee. But then my, I, I do have a couple questions with respect to additional things. It's not um, what's that? 
90%? Yeah, 90%. It, assu it assumed mm -hmm. that there was no half day option. Right. And that uh, everybody would pay uh, except for 10%. But we have qualified. no half day teachers. Right. Well, how could that be? That was what was that, presented. Right. But the, the law requires that every public school provide a free <coughs> program to all of the pupils in the community, which is why we offer free half day now, which is why we can't go to an all full day K and everybody pays. It, well. <laughs> so we, so a, a mistake. Yep. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, so we're clearing that, that up now. Okay. Then the other, and it was sort of, I, I was thinking along the same lines as Dr. McLeod with respect to transportation. If um, kindergarten isn't mandated, I, I don't see why do we have to provide transportation to f and, and incur the $36,000, $37,000 for that midday transportation for those half-day well, students. Well, I can clarify that. Yep. Providing a, a 2.6 hour kindergarten program is mandated. You do not have to attend. Right, you don't have to, it's not so required for the first you're not required, you're, you know, I, I, unlike, right, if you're not sending your child to school, right? You, <coughs> so we are required to provide a minimum program of two and a half hours with no, at no charge, no cost. Yes, but are we, do we know that we're required to provide transportation to that program? Yes, yes. Eight and six, it's, in, it's required. Eight six, outside of two miles. Outside of two miles, it's free to the families. Um, so that, that was, I just wanted to know if we yep. had to provide that. Because if, if we are looking at one classroom or 10% of the students, we're now incurring $37,000. We are. To the big concern is where do they live? Right. You know, right now we have, you know, a, a breakdown by geography. Uh, so we can run our buses uh, mm -hmm. geographically very easily. But if we don't know where they're going to live and we don't know what the split is mm -hmm. and if it's, 30, if it's 30 kids instead of the 40 that we're, we're assuming, you know, could they all be on one side of town that could save us some money on the buses? <clears throat> or will they be everywhere, in which case we'd need sex? Or could all you right. Be right she's, got more, right. yeah. she's got more on the list. She's got more on the list. My only, only other um, Cinemal, okay. thing that I think we should look at is um, our community peers' preschool tuition. Have we looked at increasing that so that it's actually comparable to, to preschool tuitions in, in the area? Because I think right now it's, it's low. For the hours that we provide preschool, I agree with you 1,000 percent. We looked at that two years ago, and I believe the committee chose to keep it uh, at the $3,200 that it is right now. Um, we, there on it, it, we raise I think about $105,000 a year from those. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of money on the table, but I agree with you that we should uh, consider it. Uh, but in light of the committee's uh, thought process to reduce fees, you know, it certainly wasn't mm -hmm. something that you know popped to mind. Uh, this okay. budget. All right. Yeah. I mean, I was just looking. I mean, we're charging right three thousand or thirty-five hundred or four thousand yeah. for kindergarten, yep. and it seems to me one place to look when we're talking about these reductions and trying to get our budget back to four point four percent to make Scott and appropriations happy. We we could look at preschool tuition. Anything we can do to make them happy. Well, how, how many um, community peers are in our program? Uh, 105, 600 divided by 3,200. 33. Is what? 33, 33 kids this year. Yep. You know, I should also point out, <laughs> if, if it's okay, Nancy, <laughs> that yep, we're no going to land this thing in a couple no of minutes. No picked so. up on this one yet, but um, an additional increase to this current adjustment that wasn't in originally is that um, additional person for the tutoring center at the high school that was not in the budget he came and said it wasn't in the budget mm -hmm. that's an addition so that's in response to the presentations that you've seen throughout this um, oh and that's not on here it, it, it is. is Oh, it, it's the last positive item <laughs> on that list 23,655 oh okay and was the correction that uh, Ms. DeBow made about not asking for an assistant principal reflected in the budget prior to it's tonight? Re it's reflected in the, the uh, administrative reorg, which is part of the $420,000 cost of
pre FDK. Oh, okay. 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 It was a seventy thousand dollar offset. Got it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have one who you want. Only, only option one. You want free full day kindergarten for everybody who wants to come, and no half day option. That is, that is correct. That is what you want. Okay, and you have you're somewhere. I'm wavering between two and three. 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 Ellen has at the moment. preference. Preference for one. For one. one and three. Okay. And then I'll go to three. And then you'll go to three. That's where we are. And where are you on this topic? I think I'm at two or three. Yeah. Okay. And I'm at two or three. So um, given that, <coughs> if we were given that and you had to choose Ellen and John and you had to choose a two or a three, what would you choose? I'm not voting for a budget that doesn't have one. So. Well, we're not voting yet. Right. So, no, I'm just so, saying. So, so there's nothing we could really do. It's really irrelevant to me. I, okay. I think we're creating I I greater inequity. I think we're just basically kicking the can down the road and picking next year's kindergarten class to not do this for. I, I think it's, um, and, and again, I, I question even the logistics of being able to deliver it given how many kids might opt for the half-day kindergarten program. I think we could be back here saying, what are we going to do with the class of eight half-day kindergartners? Okay. I, so I, right. I. Okay. This, the, uh, this might be my not understanding this process, but I, I sort of also tried to ask Dr. McLeod this. E even if, if we came in at, we say we do 4.4%, she's right in charge of the district and the curriculum and the educational program, so she could come back after we approve a certain budget. I'm not saying that she will, but she right. could come back and say, hey, look, I decided that actually this is more important than technology throughout the district. There you go. Mm -hmm. cool. and, and then we'd all be happy. So it's not about, or we're not, we can't really say we don't want full day kindergarten. That's not really our choice. Well, she could change that for sure, and then people could not vote for the budget on town meeting floor. Well, let me say, let me say my, give you my position differently. I don't have, particularly have an issue with full day kindergarten. I, I have I'm an not issue. That you do. Um, no, I'm just telling you I don't. <laughs> but I, I have an issue with a 5.58% a budget. I mean, that's, that's what I have an issue with. And so, yes, it is about making priorities throughout the budget process. But I, you're, I agree. But you're also telling me that you don't want it to affect the other schools. That's what right. I'm hearing. So, yes. can't do both. Yes, I can't agree. do both. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> Just make it clear. Okay. The reality, is that in my mind, is we do what we can. We can't have everything. Uh, and. So again, we, we I understand yeah. that, it's, but but we're we're saying no to the <laughs> the thing that the superintendent is telling us we need the most. In the last three weeks, she has. Oh, I've been saying that this is important this was the since number November. One priority. Well, you're going to be saying it throughout the strategic plan process because you I want am. to bring this in for I a am. new building, and we're going to expand and, you know, and all the I'll, other things. So I'll you're talking about whether it's going to be next year, whether it's going to be the year after that, and and. That's what Step we're working one on. is at least an improvement over what we're doing now. And that's, that's what, what I was I trying to say. say. So, so right. I mean, it's, it's all about trading one compromise for another compromise. But I, I, right. I, the, 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 the dilemma of presenting you with a, with a, with a fair, um, sound, tight budget, I did that. For you to say, well, you can go back now and make it a priority, <laughs> how could I possibly do that oh, and be giving a reasonable budget that was affecting all? Yeah. So what happened in the interim was there was a lot of support for and the belief that the town would support a budget that included tuition-free full day K. Mike, you're saying otherwise, and, and I don't know how that works, but it seems to me that when it comes time to vote, because I was there, I mean, I know how it works to a certain extent. The town is voting for a budget that supports all of the initiatives of all of the departments. And I don't know what the details are, you, you do, in all of those other departments. And so, and I get that we're just one department. So I, I absolutely want to be collaborative here. I don't want to be unreasonable. There was a lot of support that was garnered about this initiative, which is why we're here tonight talking about it, which is why we're talking about a higher percent than what I initially brought. So 
I did it in response to what I believed was the support for the importance of this initiative on the on the part of the town. Yeah. Um, well, and let me, and I, I, I want to say it this way, but yeah. but I'll just say it, okay? Go. Because it's not toward you, but the track record of the town manager and the selectmen recently, as far as getting things that they were their initiatives through town meeting, has been really poor. So take that as you will, but um, you know the people of the town. Look, we we can pass whatever you want. You could you can pass a 5.8 percent budget over my objection. We have that's why there's five of us here, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Um, again. I don't have a, a programmatic issue with what you're trying to do. I don't. I really don't. It just, it just, I just think it's way too much for the taxpayers <coughs> to foot the bill for. That's, that's just my view. Well, so here, so, 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 it will, so just, to, no, just will one, not change next year. Okay, just it one. Get less yeah, just, just correct. the one, the one thing I want to say, just to ask you to to make a correction. Okay. You didn't bring this forward based on the support that you heard for it. You brought this forward because you believe that this is the educational program that the students should have. And, and when I just heard you say you brought it forward with, with the support, I don't want that to be distracting. You brought this forward, this initiative forward as a priority recommendation to us because you believe that that should be the priority program for our littlest learners. You know, I, I'm responding to Scott, though. Scott is saying, why is this coming now? If you had brought this forward in the original 4.4 percent, I wouldn't be having a problem with it. So the react, the re is that? Am I right in? Well, to some, I in, mean, I understand. In a nutshell, you're, you're saying it's not the program; it's it's the percent. So I guess <clears throat> I had to work within what has changed between the original recommendation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that. The, and and then Ellen wanted to ask a question. Nancy, could I could I just ask one question? To uh, whom? Point one thing out. Option two. To who? Option two. Yeah. She, she asked you a question. To who are oh, you talking oh, to? To you. Oh, uh, to, to, to the, the five of us. Okay. Option two, at thirty-five hundred dollars, is more sustainable than option three, and the reason I say that is because we're using ninety-one thousand dollars of one-time revenue. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So I would just throw that out uh, okay, for you that's to think an about. Okay, that's important point. And as Jean pointed out, it does represent roughly, it's a little bit more, obviously. It's a little bit more, but it's about 10%. Reduction, a 10 a 10% reduction. A 10% reduction. 5% reduction. Okay. Going to 3,000. Which is, is 3,000 is a 25%. Okay. All right, Ellen? If we took out the 10% reduction of fees and the one gen ed pair at the high school, What's our percentage? It must be under 5.03. Yeah. Uh, the fees are 50. So let's see. I think I already did that. 37, 374, 550, 50. Minus 26, 4.82. And so we make this, if we were to make one of these, if we were to make the free full day kindergarten program decision for next year, that would be the starting point, so to speak, for every budget after that, because we would be absorbing or, or starting with that line yep. every year. <coughs> okay. All right. And, and and again, not to be confrontational about it, so, well, why not? I guess, <laughs> but but. You know the, re the the fee reduction. Is this ten percent of the current fee or ten percent of last year's? Ten percent of the current fee. Well, current see, fee. last year we started a program where we were, we were going to reduce. We we're talking about reducing by ten percent a year. Now, conceptually, you would say that's ten percent of what the number was before we started the reduction. I mean, if you take ten percent out of each year, it, it's it's it'll go on f in perpetuity. Yeah, it's right? like paying the, your credit card at bill. At the same time, and and again, not to be too confrontational, but when we had our very first preliminary bu you know, budget subcommittee meeting, or whatever we call it, I mentioned the fees. This is the first time they've shown up anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, over the last, we you asked, know, again, we've asked a, for that. To as come a single today. member, that, and I've told you, that was a priority of mine. 
Well, was that we asked to over the last the couple of weeks to have it put forward because we want to make sure that we can. Right. If, we're, if we're being asked to yeah, make no, the kindergarten a priority initiative, I wanted to give us the opportunity to say yes, we want this to be a priority initiative, but we needed the numbers. So, so right, okay. So, um, so if we were to keep, so you've just told us that the best, the most viable option if we weren't going to eradicate a half-day program is option two, paid full day, tuition full day kindergarten at $3,500 with a half-day option, uh, uh, option uh, half-day program continued. Okay. And then if we went with that, then your chart changes, Dr. McLeod. You would remove certain things. You would Absolutely. keep certain things. Right. They were only put there to um, support the free option. Okay. That's the only reason that any of them are there. All right. So um, then let's, we, we have the opportunity to, to discuss what Scott just pointed out. Do we want to continue the commitment for another year of the reduction in fees for transportation, parking, and athletic? Those are the only ones we did last year. We did not do student uh, club eliminated dues. Those. We, we eliminated those. We didn't remove. We didn't reduce the preschool, nope. and, um, and you didn't reduce they were uh, other kindergarten. kindergarten or F one visa right. or the F one visa. Uh, right, right. Right. Okay. Any tuition we didn't. Or the daycare. You say that. Oh, uh, uh, daycare. Right. Okay. So, um, are we? Is is there a voice for com besides Scott for a commitment to prioritize the fee reductions? 10% for this year's budget. Yes. And yes. Okay. All righty. So, uh, Ellen, do you? Uh, it's a consensus opinion. We're not. I'm not at the point of voting at this moment. So, I'm sorry. Do, we, do you want to continue? Do you want to also include as a priority initiative in this budget the reduction of fees, the three that are listed on here as adjustments? Uh, priority behind free. Full day K. Okay. Yes. All righty. I, I would amend my statement to that. Yes. Say that. Okay. All righty. So if we used an option, if we used option two for full day kindergarten with half day and used these three 10% uh, reductions transportation, parking, and athletics, where would that put us? Can you do that right now or no? That's just an initiative. That's a priority initiative. Well, if we're at 5.72, is that the number? 37, 621, 141. And we're going to subtract the savings on option two. Where'd you get 5.72? That's the number it's at on the, the mm -hmm. yeah, on the work. But that's including full day K. Right, he's backing that up. 5.5. Oh. We're at a 5.5? No. 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 That can't be. Why? So we're, if because we're at 5.72. Because, because they're, talking about, they're talking about taking that out and only including these oh, well. on top 4. of the 4.4. 4. 4. That's as far on top as of the 4.4. I think you'd be at 4.7. At 4.4 doesn't include, right? So I'm, just I'm do, sorry. I, yep. I didn't understand what That's you okay. said. That's okay. So we're looking at the 4.4 plus $50,000. Yeah, Is that? Yeah, that's okay. in a yeah. nutshell. Four point five four. Okay. So, if is we, there anybody if we, else that has anything? Sorry, can I just so the four point five four was what again? It, it would be. It, it's the four point four percent budget yep. plus fifty thousand dollars for the fees. So it's option two. Yes. No, see, I I, I did option two, and afterwards, and, and I was told not to. So. No. Option two, so uh, could I ask that we, can you give us yeah. a number and then we can come, we can go. Yeah. I mean, so if it's important that we inc inc include the reduction of fees and come out at 4.4, then we need to go back and decide how to reprioritize this list um, as opposed to trying to yeah. do that here because the number, as you know, that the 4.4 was based on was it's a $4,000 right. tuition. 
So we've got to go back and do some work. Yeah, we do. But if you you got to give us a number because um, it it, we, it that would help. If you're telling us 4.4, and that's the appetite, then we'll go do our work and come in at 4.4. What I'd like to see is what the number is with option two and a, as a priority and uh, these three reduced fees. Whatever okay. that number yep. comes in, that's just me. I mean, that's, that's well, what it's I'm gonna, It's going to be for. above 4.4, though. So what we can do is inc include some of these adjustments. And then para, because that's an ad. This is the two, this is what you talked about for the high school. This right. is the tutor. Yeah, but so if you're done with the 4.4, it didn't include gen ed para. So that's I think we've got to give them that answer as well if we're doing this because that's going to that would increase it over the 4.4 as well. Oh well, all of these would. Right. That's where that's where my that's yeah. <coughs> is it, um, does it make it harder or easier if we quickly pull out any of the ones below that? Our priorities, not necessarily. I, I, I would hope to suggest. I mean, can that we make a cat sort that. of category one, category two, or, or no? You don't want us to do that. I, I, I would prefer that we get to make those decisions. Okay, all right. If, so it's not. I mean, really. It, okay. We know the impact of each of these lines, and we know that each of them. So for for you to sit and prioritize them is going to, we're going to need to explain. It's going to take us. Well, I don't care how long it is, but. Um, no, if, I'd rather if it's come not back helpful, that's fine. I just was asking if that would make okay. it easier. Um, so I guess what I would say, my priorities are, I, I would like, as Nancy said, to hear about option two, including the fee reductions, but I feel strongly that we need to know the impact of the response about laptops from the seniors. Any other? Are we just asking for what we want? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it come in at 4.82. <laughs> and I would like that to include free full day kindergarten. 4.82 and what? <laughs> and she wants it to include free, free, free full day, day kindergarten. I think I know where you're going. Yeah, we missed that one. Okay. <laughs> but in fa I mean, in fa I, I, I just, I have a, I, am I assuming that these both, these are your priorities? Is this, You've is heard this my an priorities. order? You've no, she said it's not a prioritized list. Um, but but see, for us to go away with you not you not no. united on what you want is going to put us back in this very same place mm -hmm. next week. You, I, I need direction in <coughs> terms of I'm hearing 4.8 with this and this, and I'm hearing 4.4 with that and that, and I think we've been going around now, and I need direction from you. So so, so when you add, so free uh, the tuition fee. For everyone but John and I, that's a priority over free full day kindergarten. The tuition reduction is that is that right? So that's that's the majority. Fee so. reduction from four thousand to I'm just, thirty I'm five hundred. No, oh, the, the asking the what the priorities fees. of the committee are. Right, that, I think me to too. get you. Yeah. To your, so, for me, great. Reduce the fees, but only after you provide free full day kindergarten. Okay. Oh, we can't. Right, right. she can't. So so she's that's what I gave you tonight. Well, right. no, that's so what, yeah, that's, 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 that, right. that's this. That's, that's this. Right. right. That's what it is. Okay. So are you supporting that? No. No. Are you supporting that at this point? Free full day kindergarten. Am I supporting? F that's, what, that's what they want as their priority initiative in the budget, plus these, temper plus these fee reductions? Mm -hmm. And whatever that number comes up to, and senior laptops, and the and and the gen ed para. Uh, so, I came tonight to support what's on this sheet. Okay, after so the you're work that was was done around it and the priorities that okay. the superintendent put forward. So I, I'm not asking for anything else because okay. 5.03 with the free full day K and the two, and the fee reduction. I was comfortable with. Okay, all right. So, but the laptops weren't factored in. Is that uh, so not a priority, or I? Because I, that's information that's not final yet. I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know because I don't know what we're, we're okay. talking about for a number. I don't know what that it's level just, is. I mean, realistically, we're not going to know the numbers no. until next not fall. Until, right. Uh, the summer. Right. No. You know? 
Um, yeah. So, you know, are you, you going to go out and lease a hundred laptops for, you know, a hundred thousand dollars over okay. three years? And so there was something in his budget based on a prediction, which is yeah. now not coming true. I just want to know yeah. what he now thinks that adjustment needs to be. Yeah, I'm not sure what's in because his that directly a, affects. I don't every know, I think day, he said he didn't class. need any more computers, and they had 50 there for loaners. So that's what that's what I remember him saying. We'll have to no, we no. would need more. Yeah. But clearly, yeah. yeah. No. They, so they, again, I mean, yeah. no, just based upon the the the, the, the survey response, right. information, right. which is yeah. still ongoing. Okay, right. 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 But but again, you know, we we need to reflect on the responses that we've all been getting, and and one of the ones that. I heard loud and clear was dividing the town on issues. So if we're going to go ahead and say, oh, we're not supporting free full day K, but you know, those senior laptops are important, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're creating a division I'm in the town based on priorities that are, we're not part of, of the budget. I'm not prioritizing free laptops for okay. seniors, but okay. what you've said is in order for the seniors to take their classes next year because many of them are mixed with juniors. Mm -hmm. They need to have laptops because mm -hmm. the juniors have laptops. So maybe that doesn't mean everybody gets a laptop to bring home. Maybe that means we need a certain number of laptops available in classrooms where there are courses taught that are mixed. Mm -hmm. I think that number is far less than every senior. Right, but they don't also, take every class with juniors. They take some classes with juniors. That's that's where the inequity in the education is coming, right? So if we already have that cost covered, great. But if we don't, that that is one of the impacts that that you're talking about. I don't have a senior, but you know, not compromising other students' education for this education because we can provide the full day K with a tuition, which is what we're asking the seniors to do, either by leasing or purchasing a laptop and, and all of the other fees. I mean, you know, again, with compromises, all across our district, we have unfortunately had to ask parents to pay for things that we all think should be included in public education. So that, that pain is already spread all the way across. So would you consider a scenario by which you reduce the fees by 5% this year and invest the $25,000 in uh, one year's payment towards additional laptops at the high school? I mean, maybe, but I would just, I, I don't even know if that works out. Why don't you no. do that work when you go back? You're going to go back now and know that there's not unanimous support for a 5.03 percent budget. You've heard that there is uh, support for a fee reduction and that there is lukewarm support for a tuitioned full day kindergarten option in addition to the free half day program. But again, we really need to know about the breakdown I mean that that is a tipping point for me. If you're talking about two people, you know, I feel strong I feel badly for those two people, but you can't hold everybody else hostage. If you're talking about 25% of the class, that's a different different equation. So I I don't want to say that I absolutely am not going to support free full day K. I I know this is only making your problem worse. I'm no, sorry. No, I'm actually still on the laptops. So I'm <laughs> not I'm really not I don't know where this is coming from. And so I'm, I apologize if I've missed something. Um Obviously, bring your own device is an option that's free. Right. Every kid has a device already. Um, I know that when we brought, forth, brought forward the technology budget, there was conversation, discussion about the, this whole dilemma about it's only one year for this group of kids, which resulted in the survey. Right. What I'm, what I'm not clear on, Jean, is what additional information you're looking for that wasn't provided by the survey. <coughs> what part of that is going to create a cost? I thought that was in what Ashok said, was that he now doesn't believe that he has enough laptops. <laughs> but there are 52 people they don't, who don't want to participate. They don't, That's yeah. so, so, the, so can they, so can they reasonably they don't all not have, participate, or, or do no. we have to be able to provide them with a laptop? They because cannot everybody not participate. Else, right, right, so, okay. so but, 52. That's but again, why you can get 75 laptops for... $25,000 yep. a year for three years. And so that's, and what, she's, that's what she's yep. asking. Okay. And, and can they just have 
a few extra in the classrooms that need them as opposed to give them to every senior. I, that's perfectly right, he reasonable. answered that that was difficult to monitor, you know, to monitor that and to have, right. But well, so we'll, there's a lot about this that's difficult. Figure it out. That would be cheaper. I'm just, I don't know if it's possible. It, it's, okay. okay. I, I don't know. I'm not advocating it's for having, it. It's I'm having laptops a, walk and it's the, it's the security well, piece and it's, there's all that. So that Ashok answered um, about. I, right. Well, I, I mean, I didn't, maybe I didn't read all of that. I'll go back so and read it again. But Do you have, a, I know you don't have what you came for. I don't have clear direction. Um, I, I, I do believe that I need to leave tonight with a number. And I don't think I have one, that, it, that there's consensus here on a number. Um, right. I don't, I'm not going to give you a number because I don't know what the number is. I, I want a tuitioned program and I want these three that's what I want. Whatever that number comes up to, that's what I want. So I'm not, mm -hmm. not going to give you a number. So, but I hear that from you, Nancy. Okay. I, I don't hear, I don't. He do doesn't want to give you anything because he wants what do, do was. Do I get any consensus, though, on, on what, I mean, I'm coming back with next time at this point? Or am, are we just going to do this again? I, I, I want to provide I, I, you with what right. you want. So you got to you either say, I'm not going to give you a number, or I want this, or um, I right. want that. What I, what I want is um, I want the, the feeder reductions. Um, and I think option, and, and just budgetarily, I think option two makes the most sense. Um, you know, and, and therefore, in, with those two things in mind, you know, we're, we were at 4.4. I could I could potentially support something a slight bit higher than that, you know, a couple percentages or tenths of a percent above that potentially, you know, without reducing other services around the system. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I feel. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I don't I don't know what to say at this point. I I actually feel like this is I, I can't imagine sitting over there because I thought last week we took consensus and it was. We support that free full day kindergarten is your priority. Come back with a budget that fits it in. Now, now you've done it. We're at 5.03. You came down 6%. And we're sitting here saying, well, w we don't support that as your priority anymore. So let's just look at reduction in fees because that's most important. I just, I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Wh whatever, I mean, whatever, because we're not supporting your priorities anymore. So I'm not really sure how to, how to say this is a number. I mean, I, I so did what I, 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 I did really, what you I asked me to difficult. do. So I, I, I'm happy with the 5.03 percent. Okay. I think that we sh I think we should ask the town to approve it, and if it doesn't, I mean, if it doesn't work, then we make a hard decision on the budget that does that does get approved. I, mean, I, I don't know. Okay. So I, I I get it. I got it. That's great. And you. Well, I mean, I think what I said. I think what I said last week was that I would like to be able to support free full day K if we can afford it. And, and so, I mean, I, I don't mean to send you running in circles, and I, am, I apologize if that's the way that you're feeling. Um, I think at this point I'm probably closer to where Scott is, which is um, <coughs> where I am right now, as I said a long time ago, I feel like option two is a compromise that might be more palatable to the town, hopefully. But there's still some information that I need before I can feel comfortable with a final number. I'm absolutely willing to go above 4.4%. I absolutely support your priorities. You know, um, I understand you're not comfortable with all of these things, and, and that's fine. I just, I think it's clear that amongst us, our main priorities are some version of full day K and fee reductions. Those are the, the primary things that I'm hearing. So, well, from what's here tonight, I mean, I, just if, if we have to back up, I mean, the, the initiatives that you built into the budget, for example, professional development for technology, I mean, the amount of money that we've spent to bring technology into the buildings needs to be maximized by the professionals who are using them. And you've explained that across the budget, that professional development, which was where we always cut, needs to be reinstated because the tools that we've brought in to enhance learning need to be 
mastered or need to be um, utilized better. And so I'm, I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of the priority initiatives that are in the budget, that were in the budget up until um, we started this discussion. And I just want to add that um, class size has always been important to us. Mm -hmm. The team model, all the things that you said when Ellen asked, what will this budget bring? We support that. I support that. I think you do as well. So you're looking, you're looking for that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry that that wasn't as um, invigorating as you'd like it to be, but... Um, oh, it was very invigorating. Well, wait till you get to the next one, because I think you all thought that on the capital, I I capital articles... Oh, were they going to get to ask questions about that? Coffee. About that? Yeah. How about next week? Let's get to this part. Okay. We, when we put this together, we said in our meeting minutes that we would come back and we would look at every one of these capital articles. <laughs> we prioritized eight articles then and then I guess on the fifth there was the addition so there are nine capital warrant items that are on this list and uh, we have the list in front of us the uh, they were sent in as placeholders was the uh, discussion we had the minutes reflect that they were sent in as our articles so um, that is install sideway walkway at center school school safety and security article buildings and grounds equipment a truck temporary modular classrooms at center school, joint telephone system installation, complete auditorium upgrade at the middle school, roof repairs at Hopkins and high school for engineering, upgrade fire alarm system middle school engineering, and ceiling tile replacement at the Hopkins school. So Mr. Dumas has put this together for us and in addition to that the sheet also says that they um, we have recommended with we had agreed with their recommendation to delay items that appeared on the capital improvements forecast and there are those five items on there so um, the nine that we have on here reflected the conversations and the prioritization over those last two meetings and they were sent in as as requested yep. right and now we have a form that we have to fill out for warrant articles I don't know if that fits this as well but um, I, I thought we should follow up on our discussion and have a final conversation on this uh, because this goes along with the budget in addition to what we've asked for or what we will ask for as a percentage increase these articles are um, impacts as, impact the uh, taxpayer as well so um, I'm just to start it off, I, am, I was nervous then, and I continue to be nervous about the temporary modular classrooms. I know we've had conversations over the course of the weeks that we could get refined numbers. There are also other options for um, whether or not you'd purchase it, whether you would lease it, and I know that there's more information that's coming on that. My worry is, uh, and it was um, fueled by last week's meeting, where we could have gone... Uh, over the line and advocated for support of something that could be a ballot question. We did not do that. We are not going to do that. But um, with respect to the modular classrooms, um, I don't know whether it's, whether it's going to be something that we ask people to go to the polls and vote on or if a lease is something that gets handled in the, um, in, in the regular budget. And that doesn't mean that um, if it's one, I'm in favor of it, and if it's the other, I'm not in favor of it. It's just I don't know enough about it, and I don't know if we know enough about it tonight. So I wanted to bring that up for a conversation um, if we went, when we were going to discuss this list. So if that's the only thing that anybody uh, has a question about, or uh, has nobody has a question and I just have a question, then I can leave it at that, and I can get the information later from you, and we don't have to spend any more time talking about the list of nine. <coughs> I've had no conversations about how uh, any of these uh, would be funded. Okay. So that I guess that's the next stage that we'd go through after we move mm -hmm. through this. Has the Appropriation Committee had any? You, don't, you haven't had any conversation yet? I haven't seen the list so, of the capital. From the Capital Improvements Committee? Is that where that list is from? I this is where we sent <coughs> back, to them. back to them, but you haven't seen that yet. Okay. No. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, again, I just, I'm concerned that if, if we were putting our eggs in a basket and this did not get approved, um, 
that would be an issue. So the closer we can get to refining whatever it is that it costs, however we were going to pay for it, the better we are. Well, ultimately, uh, we won't know how much it's going to cost until we go out to, to bid. Pay. Okay. Uh, we so. do have an updated cost. So for two classrooms, um, originally we were looking at four, and the cost installed for two would be three hundred and fifteen thousand. Uh, but again, that's just a, a budget idea number. That's a uh, buy. That's that, a buy. That's a buy. Okay. Yeah. Now we talked about you're talking about there's extra space at Elmwood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, can the modular classrooms that are at Elmwood be moved? Not without a lot of expense. We looked at that. Okay. You would have to. Um, they're attached to the building, so yeah. you'd have to break down a wall. Then you'd have to. You know, all of the heating systems have been installed, and yeah, uh, good thought. We we uh, went down that road. Um, no, it doesn't sound like anybody else is concerned, so I don't well, want to waste anybody else's time. No, I. So when. So we're going to vote on this, and and they'll figure out the financing, whether it's better to purchase or to lease. <coughs> I have no problem leaving this on. <clears throat> the um, on the warrant, I think it's appropriate to let the town decide if they want to invest in them or not. I mean, I think that's completely appropriate. Um, <coughs> you know, again, I think if we're going towards option two, that will help us make an even better decision in the following year because we'll know one way or the other about the modulars. But I do think that. Um, between assuming that you all want to leave it on here, I think between now and town meeting, there are a lot of questions that we need to answer about what the impacts are of having it there as far as any impacts on the building project. Does there have to be, you know, do we have to work with the fire department around emergency lanes? Do we have to talk to the historic district commission? All those kinds of things, which we don't need to resolve tonight, but um, philosophically, I think it's perfectly appropriate to let the town say whether they want to have these modulars on that property or not. I mean, I mean, my view is they should program. stay. So even if we do the tuition base, you still want it? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, my thought is, is, is that the list should stay as is for now. My recollection of the process, there are still options, there's still, there's still time to remove items from the yes. list later. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, and that being said, you're going to be getting your, you know, you would get your your information um, as far as the survey for, for for incoming kindergarten. At the same time, we would hopefully be further along with the building project to know. I, what I'm thinking, one of the, the worst case scenario would be we have no information about the building project, and but we come with knowledge, <coughs> and people on town meeting floor are going to say, well, "What are you doing?" information the building project well but we might we're gonna get to feed we're gonna get maybe into feasibility we're gonna get into feasibility potentially on march 26th we're not even gonna have but even we're, that we're not even right. gonna be we're not even gonna have like rfp out for a for a for a feasibility study by the time town meeting rolls around so i, I don't but but i think at that point we can at least say you know we've moved here we, you know we we're now starting to expend the funds <coughs> that you appropriated last year. So, so we can we'll show progress, forward. but we're not going to be able to answer questions about no, no, no. the impact think, on site. No. Right. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. I just think people are going to, would say, wait right. a minute, we what? approved that money last year for this feasibility study. Now you come into, you know, if if you can s show that, that it's necessary currently at center school while, and, and this is the progress we made this year, I, I think that and that, that will go a long way. And that's been that was a good point to end because when we discussed these items, as I said, my my recollection was the conversation was we could send these as placeholders. The minutes say this was what we voted on to send as a list. So I was just bringing up. Does anybody want to change it? Because I'm kind of interested in changing it. I've not heard that anybody wants to change it, so we don't have to change anything. We don't have to vote on anything. We've done what we needed to do earlier in December. So um, this is something that you haven't seen yet. You'll see it when, I guess, Capital Improvement sends it to you. But uh, this was part of our meeting package. So if you didn't get that as part of this was, <coughs> sent, it was just, just sent. sent to you. OK. All right. Yes. So it's just um, the list that we had together from our meetings on the 29th and the 5th. So 
Well, Nancy, I, yes. I don't know, um, I, I know our conversation went kind of in, in, a, in a circle there for a minute, but I didn't know if you wanted to uh, invite Mike and um, Frank to comment on the last portion. They didn't get to ask sure. questions on the, on the budget recommendations. The last portion being? Being the budget recommendations that I, what, you know. The we, work she's going to take back to everybody her Everybody kind team of weighed in on where they stood, the, um, the, the adjustments. I didn't know if you had questions. The potential adjustments to preliminary budget, I didn't know. Well, I think you, a lot of, well, Frank, do you want to comment? I'll let you start. Okay, well, I think, <laughs> well, just based on the conversation that, you know, we didn't go through each item, what was really necessary, what was not. Um, but when you, you kept on repeating that you thought all of them were really necessary, I think there were some ones that were automatically going to reduce costs anyway, which kind of makes sense to do, but not if it was going to something you originally wanted to go in there. Cause like I said, I thought your original budget was, you know, we asked, we thought, I thought it was pretty reasonable to have a 4.4% compared to what it's been in the last couple of years. So, and you did that and you had the flexibility to make those decisions. So, you know, without the tuition free kindergarten, I still think based on that number, you could, I know you have a little bit of changes with the, the fee reductions, but, but maybe that works in with a lot of the, the easier ones that you thought were going to drop out anyway. Um, okay. So that's my comment on, okay. on that. that. Mm -hmm. Nothing significant to add, only, you know, I guess the, the option that was referred to as not on the list. Um, I, I, I would be interested in laptops. No, no, no. Option you've got option one, two, and three. Oh, the four thousand yeah. dollar option. It, it's it would be uh, interesting to see what that sure. is. I mean, that's status quo plus the direction we're sure, moving. I can take care of that. Yeah, yeah. We'll bring that just as a, another we'll get free time? for next week. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So. All of the uh, conversation, debate, and discussion that we had we'll plan for again next week because we have the public hearing. When the public can come and tell us what they think of what we've discussed on camera over the last couple of weeks and specifically tonight, we don't take a vote. We don't come with a, with a plan as individuals until after we've heard from the public. So um, I just want to make sure that people realize that the public hearing really is the opportunity for them to come and share their reactions, their thoughts, their opinions, and their um, within boundaries, their frustration with what we have um, to consider for a budget submission <coughs> to the town manager. So we have that as a um, just a special meeting so that is the um, opportunity next week we'll open the meeting we'll open the public hearing and we'll have a conversation for all those who've come to speak and uh, we'll close the hearing after everybody's had at least one chance to speak so thank you very much for the work you've put in to date thank you very much appropriation um, representatives for coming you're welcome to join us I think you, I think you come next week anyway <coughs> And uh, we'll begin right here on Thursday, January 30th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you again to HCAM for taping this or filming this. And um, we will see you next Thursday. Thank you for watching. Good night. Oh, sorry, I didn't adjourn the meeting. Oh, gosh, sorry. <laughs> move to adjourn the meeting in open session. Second. Okay, at 10, 10, 18. Sorry, sorry. John is, is uh, making the motion, and Scott Agababian seconds it. All those in favor of the motion? Yes. It's unanimous and so carries. We're adjourned at, at 1019. Thank you very much.